I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Maya Al Hawari. <laughs> I was like, I have to respond like rudely. You really like this person, but your gut says not for this role. Not for this one. Yeah. Yeah. Especially when you're angry. One hundred percent. Good one, Kev. Good one. Very professional. Need for a couple of minutes. Let me know. Yeah. He's not twenties anymore. Sorry, Ian. <laughs> am I? Three simple words, the answer of which is very often difficult to face. We all face pains. We all face challenges. We all at times face questions that we don't have the answers to. This is where we have to realize that life is a series of choices and the choices you make will ultimately affect the outcome of your life. You can make the choice to complain and do nothing about it. But you can also make the choice to face the uncomfortable pain, the truth, the reality of where you are, and more importantly, where you want to go. You can make the choice to get better, to get smarter, to get sharper, and to be stronger. My guest today is an inspirational Emirati. She was the vice principal of a private school at a time where there weren't so many Emiratis in that position. She did that for eight years followed by two years as principal, a place and position where many stay for a significant number of years. Well, not for my guest. As happy as she was with her journey in the field of education, she no longer felt that way. What she felt was that there was more. She didn't know what, but she knew there was more. She also had a lot of questions, but struggled for the answers. The kind of questions we've all had to ask ourselves at some point in our lives. Questions you might be familiar with. Questions like, who am I? Why am I on this earth? What's my purpose? My guest had to learn to cope with one of her kids being disabled, or as we like to call it in Dubai, people of determination. My guest has also had to deal with the stigma that's associated with being depressed. And while going through her depression, she faced over 30 rejections while applying for jobs. She felt like she was drowning. What did my guest want? Well, at that stage, she didn't know what she wanted. She didn't have a sense of direction. She didn't have answers. This went on for five years. My guest finally decided to grab the bull by the horn. Her frustrations led her to seek answers. Answers that helped her set new goals. Answers that helped her grow. Answers that today she shares to inspire and help others. My guest started off fearful, but today she is fearless. She is bold, she is brave, she is bombastic. She is a wife and mother of three kids. She is the chairperson of the Board of Governors of Dubai Carmel School. She trains government employees on building their leadership skills. She was awarded the Ambassador of Knowledge for the volunteer work she did with the Red Crescent and was chosen as one of the 50 social media icons and influencers to represent the Year of Tolerance as a tolerant knight. My guest is thankful for her depression and says that it was the best thing that has happened to her because it led her to become the first PhD scholar on emotional intelligence and its effect on leadership in the United Arab Emirates. My guest exemplifies the words she shared with me, that nothing is far-fetched. If you or someone you know is asking the question, who am I? Then let me tell you, friend, that you are somebody unique. You are special. And I hope that the conversation I'm about to have with my guest will help you realize just that. That you can take control of your life. That sooner or later, you will figure things out and that you can go for what you want. That truly, nothing is far-fetched. This is How Do They Do It. I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. My guest today is Maya Al Hawari. Thank you for making it. Thank you for having me. We had this conversation um, prior to recording where um, we talked about 
we, we, we brought about age and we talked about youth and looking and feeling youthful. Mm. And you said something interesting that I hadn't thought about because I was telling you that I'm 39, closing into 40, and I've been looking at doing things like um, making sure that I'm vegetarian based in terms of food and doing what I need to do to look and feel young. I mean, my mom is always concerned. I'm worried about Kevin. But now I'm thinking if she keeps on saying that, I'm on the right track mm. of feeling and looking young. Then you said something interesting, which is going to make me think for some a bit about it. What was your thought? Well, the first thing that I, there are two things that keep you young. I mean, food is important. The workout is important. I mean, don't get me wrong. I work out every day, religiously. You go for walks. I do. Yeah. I do walks. I, I'm, I'm old enough and mature enough to say I hate the gym. <laughs> And I don't hate a lot of things, actually. I try not to use the word. Hate is such a strong word. <laughs> yeah, but I actually don't, I don't fancy it at all. Yeah. I like to be in the universe. I like to connect with uh, the sun, the moon, the grass, the trees, yes. the air. So that is important. That keeps me sane and keeps me you know, thoughtful and well-rounded as a being. Food is amazing and moderate there. But there are two things that I think really I do not just think I believe makes a difference. Mm. Number one, being optimistic all the time. It kind of is hard and it does take practice. And it also does take some reassurance from the universe or as we call him, Allah mm -hmm. or God, whatever energy you want to relate to. Um, having that faith that everything is going to be all right, that this too shall pass. Yes. Constantly, even in, in the most time needed, in times of turmoil, to still have that faith, that really helps. So that's one. The other thing is having faith in others and seeing the goodness in others rather than seeing it the other way around. Today, we tend to see people as guilty until proven innocent. Mm. In fact, it was always innocent until proven guilty. Yes. But then the experience with people and what we see from what is happening around us makes you discouraged not to see the goodness in others, but keep that up because what you see is what you get. Well, I mean, what you're saying, all great leaders understand. If all great leaders are able to bring the best out of their people because they see the best in people, even when those individuals don't see it in themselves, in themselves because absolutely. we grow to the level of expectation we have of others. But you put it in a frame of mind that that kind of positive expectancy actually affects your inner self. Absolutely. It affects me because I, I know I want to, I know that I'm, I've chosen a track mm. and a path is to give to others. I've mm. seen, I know what my vision is in terms, any, any vision, any vision, if we come to break it down, is different than your objectives. Yes. Objectives will always be selfish to you. Mm. And that's a good thing. You need to take care of yourself. You need to be you. You need to find that it for you. Yes. That makes you. But why are you you the way you are? Get inspired. Whether you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, the last thing you want to do is blow your budget on accommodation, which is why I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. Beyond being price sensitive, what I love about Rove Hotels is the fact that they are a combination of cafe, culture, and just coolness. Even my guests, many of them, when they arrive before we record or after we finish recording the podcast, they actually comment. They go, wow, this place is cool. The vibe is amazing. And it is amazing. So if you're in Dubai for business or pleasure, I recommend you check out our host venue partners, Rove Hotels. This episode is brought to you by M Dojo. Whether you're in business or new to business, you need three things. A good website, traffic, and being able to convert that traffic into paying customers. That's what MDojo does best. They're able to create for you a functional state-of-the-art website, drive targeted traffic, and put in all the elements needed in order to convert that into paying customers. Isn't that what you want? Of course it is. Give the team at MDojo a call and see how they can help you increase your sales and profits. Tell them I sent you. Their website, mdojo.co. The vision is always for all vision and visionary people. And we are, we are all visionary, but we have to 
know it and see it, is to give back to others. Is that, that's why we were brought on this earth. If we were brought on this earth to live alone, then why should we even uh, think or worry about or feel, even feel guilty? I mean, why? We are here to deal with each other. Living on this earth, I mean, I'm a Muslim, alhamdulillah. Mm. And I know that all monotheistic religions, even other religions around the world, we all speak to the same truth. And that is giving goodness to others. And not just being selfish. Be selfish in your objectives. But why am I doing these things? For what purpose? Mm. For the others. The others is where your vision is. That's interesting, yeah. That's, that's the difference. People talk about you, you, you enter entities and government agencies here in the UAE, everywhere in the world, and they have their vision and mission statement on there. Half the people don't know why there's a vision of this. Usually vision, vision, any vision statement is never tangible. You can never touch or see. Mm. Objectives you can. You will always, I want to be the next uh, CEO. I want to own this. I want to travel. You will always touch and feel it. Mm -hmm. You will always see it. But when you talk about the quality of life, it's not something that you're able to touch everybody. And it's, it's not for self, it's for others. It's for others. Yes. So it's always, vision always has to be in an intention to give to people, mm. in an intention to improve life and living. And I live in a country where our ancestors and our sheikhs, like Sheikh Zayed, uh, God rest his soul, and his children and his siblings, after and his successors, we're all breathing the same words he used to have. Mm. It might be to others listening to this video saying, maybe she's too, uh, um, you know, being uh, thinking out of the box or dreaming, or we're talking about. Uh, um, um, ideologies and that are not achievable. And no, it is. There are good people in the world. And there are people that want to volunteer and want to give of their time. But you, to, to be that, to be that, show it. We are good, but we don't yeah. show it. We don't actually give and show that give, giving and goodness. It's, it's also about relationships. I mean, what you're saying is, you know, looking the good and, you know, seeing the good in others mm. for others, the intention of you know, doing good for others. It comes down to relationships. Absolutely. You know, the importance of relationships. I was listening to um, a podcast by Esther Perel. Mm. She's a psychologist. Mm. And she says that the, the quality of your relationships determine the quality of your life. Mm. True. And when I put all this together, it's interesting. You were saying in terms of having a positive perspective or having a positive outlook in terms of expecting of others, being optimistic, and relationship, they all go hand in hand because I've never seen a great individual who I admire or a great leader who's done great things, who's grumpy, self-centered, and is, you know, and is, you know, negative or what have you. It's never like that. Absolutely. It's exactly what you've said, Absolutely. but it requires a level of thinking to go, oh, wow, these are actually common traits. It's like gravity. If you, but in this case, you can choose these traits. One big factor to add to what you're saying and what you're saying is actually very true. But from my experience, that kind of leadership needs time. Mm -hmm. So if people are thinking, oh my gosh, I'm, I'm not that, I'm not that at all. Mm -hmm. The fact that you're comparing yourself to what we're saying right now is a beginning to change. It means there is that seed to improve, mm -hmm. but you don't know how. But there is good news there. It's time. Yes. Time and patience. Great leaders have patience. Patience only comes after struggle. Mm. It's the, actually, patience is the last skill you learn once you're in a, in a struggle or turmoil or bad time. You will find yourself when you've passed through and sailed and you're looking back and you're thinking, wow, I actually, I actually passed, like I actually did it. I didn't realize I had that kind of patience. Yes, you do. And it only comes after you learn that good things mm. take time. Yes. Good things need hard work. Good things come to good people. Mm. You know, so these are these are very important um, and crucial things that I learned. Yes. They're very simple but very deep. You know, 
Good things doesn't happen to people that, that don't strive. Yes, there needs to be that desire to actually do. You can't just sit on a chair and expect it to come. You have to expect good, but you need to go for it as well. Very well said, absolutely. If we pick a pivotal point in your life, mm. depression. Mm. Can you tell us about Maya Al-Hawari prior to her depression? Mm. The things that you were doing, the journey that you were leading, and then perhaps how you got into that depression mm. and how you got out of it to the great things that you're doing today. Because I feel that the viewers you know, who, who are watching the video, uh, the listeners who are going to listen to this, um, the people that need to connect will really resonate with this journey yeah. and hopefully in, in the help to, uh, in the strive to actually help them uh, if I, they're going through tough times. I hope so too. Actually, I chose to say my story two years ago. I started this journey because as we are younger, we're raised that sharing is caring. Mm -hmm. But then as we grow older, sharing is less because either we don't care too much or don't even share at all. Forget it. Like, don't, don't say your story because people will judge you. Yes. You know, but if you say Sp it, if you put that, again, optimistic, if you, if you say that you are there, you're doing this for the right reasons. Yes. It's inevitable that it will be accepted and taken the right way. Yes. So prior to depression, I was breathing. Post depression, I am living. Interesting. So pre depression, I was with my children, your normal life, mother. I loved it. Uh, I went through a sick child at one point, mm. uh, special needs. Uh, went through all these hospitals in and out, beautiful three children, raising them, having fun, you know, my parents, my life, my career. I always felt, though, I always felt like in the back of my head, never really stuck in my mind and thought of it and really worked for it. I always felt that I was different. Okay. That I had something special in me. And it showed with my relationship with my children, with my mother, my father, my husband, and his relatives. But as a career, in a career sense, I always felt that I am unique. And this was while you were still? While I was still, uh, there was no depression, vice, nothing, nothing. Vice, vice, vice principal, principal and principal, and principal. Yes, principal. yes. That was like 10 years of my life. When I became principal, by the end of the two years, I found out that I absolutely didn't like what I did. Like, I didn't enjoy my career. It wasn't something that I thought my, the way you know, ask yourself, can you be doing this for the next 10 years? Mm. Minimum. 10 years minimum. If the answer is no, then forget it. The problem for me that the answer was very clear. It was a big fat no. I didn't have anything else on my CV to present to the world and change and shift. A part of my reason is that for going into depression, A, I lost who I am in my career. I didn't know what was my next alternative. Mm. Uh, that same summer, I decided to leave. And I left for the right reasons, actually. And I had no regrets at all, at all. When I took the reason, it was an educated, educated decision. And I left with, not with a heavy heart, but I just said my goodbyes and left. That same summer that I left, a friend of mine, her child, she was 18, she died in a car crash. Oh dear. And that, uh, that kind of like woke me up. I felt like I was sleeping for God knows how many years. And somebody just, just woke me up, slapped me in the face and thought, what, oh gosh, why? And I began asking questions. And uh, I want to say that depression was the best thing that has ever happened to me. The best thing that has ever Which is not to really me. a common statement or you, no. you don't find it, you don't find the word depression in the sentence, best thing has ever happened to me. It was the best thing. In hindsight. Absolutely, because again, you look back and you think, I, have, I, I wouldn't have been the person I am today. So take us back to how you were feeling at that point. At that point, it was when you think of hurting yourself, mm. you and you and you have children and you feel like you're worthless, useless, and then why why on earth was I brought? Is there really is there really a superpower that's taking care of me? Is there really some somebody that that's that that energy that God is there? Why am I going through this? You ask those questions. Was this boiling through? Because it seems like you had a good life. I you did. Had, you had you had a great job. You had you know your family. Yes. Kids, husband. You know. 
And friends? I, I was brought up in a very steady household. My father is a doctor, Dr. Tariq Abu Yunus Al Hawari, ENT. My mother is a doctor, also pharmacist. Yes. Uh, you know, I have a brother. He's a, he's a managing director, chairman, and he's. I mean, we 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 come from a very educated family. It goes to say. It doesn't really matter. Depression mm. doesn't know ethnicity, doesn't know uh, background. Yes, there are reasons that are in your subconscious. It has definitely has something to do. It, you know, you know, depression is genetic. Mm. There is part of that. You know that depression can come. Not only can come. There is a trigger, but there is actually some uh, uh, the little things that happen that build up slowly in your subconscious from childhood. Mm comes out later with yes. tra trauma. Get inspired. One of the questions that I get frequently asked is, Kev, how can I increase my motivation? We see great individuals, we see achievers, like many of the guests that I'm bringing on the show. They have the energy, they do so much, they're in a state of flow. How do they do it? Well, my team and I have released an article which I've made available on kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog the ultimate biohacking guide to increasing motivation. Or you can simply Google Kevin Increase Motivation and the article should pop up right at the top. It's absolutely free. Read it and most important of all, take the bits and pieces that are relevant to you and apply it into your life to increase your motivation. I hope you find the article of value. If you do, feel free to leave your comments and also share it with your circle of friends. Again, you can Google it. Kevin Increase Motivation, it will be the first link that pops up, or on my website, kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash blog. I mean, everybody gets stressed out sure. at work. So I, it's not because of stress, but stress and the death of that child, my friend's daughter, yes. that broke it all, like like came tumbling all down mm. and brought up that uh, those feelings. And you know, the bad part was, that I really felt like with all that, I felt the guilt that how can I feel depressed? Like, why am I even depressed? There's nothing to be depressed about. Yes. You know, so you feel guilty even more. Yes, because you're not accepting of it. Because you're not accepting of how you're feeling. You're in, absolutely. That was one part. And then as I was going through the depression, we come from a culture where you're not allowed to say that you are depressed because mm. you'll be judged. Uh, your family doesn't take it very well. Yes. Although I come from an educated family. Yes. This is, these are expectations that you're also afraid to face. Also, society, if you say, uh, I'm depressed, people will not come near you. Also, finally, myself, because I had this mindset, I also didn't accept that I was depressed and didn't accept to go get help. Mm. So it lasted that long. Five years is a whole lot of That's time. That's a long time, yeah. A lot of people told me, Maya, why would you even leave yourself to go through that? I always feel like it was a bless that I took five years. It, I learned so much about myself in the five years. I did so much research. You gave when, yourself time to simmer. I, although I didn't know it. Mm. Like, I didn't realize that now, the five years, it's almost, it almost felt like I went abroad to study and came back. We, we talk about living in a world that's so connected. We're more connected than ever before through whatever means that we have, through all the means that we have, and yet we live alone. Mm. It feels so lonely. Of course. During that period, did you feel like you could reach out to people? No, not at all. Not at all. I wouldn't dare to open my mouth. Should you have? Um, I really believe that it was supposed to be the way it was. Mm. Because I was alone, I did a lot of thinking, mm. a lot of contemplating. Like, I believe, Kevin, in the way it was. If I were to look back, would I have changed anything? Not one wink. Mm. It has changed me uh, like 180 degrees. Yeah, you can't be the same person completely. You're not the same person. Mm. I'm more determined. I have perse perseverance. I'm consistent. I'm proficient. I know what I want. I'm more driven. Uh, I know I've I've I found my vision. What's important? If I can, can I, can I take you back just to Please, that place yeah. where you, you were depressed? Because it's it's a, a low place. We are Very not doctors. Use your common sense, please. I have to just say this. Okay. Um, like 
if you're watching or listening to this, we're just having a conversation. Sharing my experience. Yeah, like use your common sense, but it's a low place. Very, um, a lonely place. It's a lonely place as well. So not only is it low, it's lonely, it's negative. The tent that we, from which we're looking, you know, the world yeah. is not rosy. So even if it's a sunny day, we see clouds. Uh, I say this, I guess, from a bit of personal experience without the labeling. What steps did you take? Because there are degrees of depression. Right. I'll tell you, but mine was perhaps. so severe and I didn't know that it was that severe until I went to my doctor in my fourth year. Okay, so finally so you decided did, to get help. I did, I did, I did because it, the depression went away, I was left with anxiety. So the sadness went away, but I was left with anxiety and the way anxiety, let me just go back a little bit about depression. Yeah. What has happened is that it was lonely. And uh, you, you, what I learned is that you need one good solid friend Mm. If you couldn't find that one good solid friend, go see a therapist. Go see somebody that can listen to you and give you some, some at least just listen to you. Just listen to you. I was going to say, what, what's the quality you're looking for in that one just person? Just to listen to you. Just somebody that will not judge you. Yes. Somebody that will just understand and accept that energy. Because being depressed, being around people, you emit this energy. And people don't want that. That's why I'm saying we're not prone to speaking because people don't want to be around depressed people. People want to always be happy because they're dealing with some issues of their own. So, so I had that one friend. Mm. Uh, also, my husband supported me. Mm. But still, it, was, it, it wasn't something that I abused because he's a good man. He, he, he understood what I was going through. He, he supported me. He backed me up. But... It was something that I chose not to have to make him heavy hearted with. Yes. Then I had my children. Yes. They were like young. I had to raise them. Then I had the society. I had to deal with them. So on top of the depression that I went through, there were levels of responsibilities plus my work, mm. plus my parents. So, so I felt like weight, a weight, a load of weight that breaks you even more. It doesn't make you. It breaks you. Sure. So for you, and you feel lonely because all these layers don't know what you're really going through. Yes. So that one friend helped. YouTube was my savior. That's amazing. Yeah. Because I am not the read and write type of learner mm. and the audiovisual. Yes. So it saved my life. I even feel that if I was depressed. Ten years ago, I th I don't think I would be here today. Mm. YouTube saved me. They should give me money for this. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. serious. Yes. Because I learned so much. And at that time, in 2013, only then the, the, um, the actual Arabic channels started putting their their episodes on YouTube. It wasn't it wasn't accustomed to. Yes. And uh, another uh, person that also helped from YouTube, because you see, we are Arabs. And I, I, am, I am an international in, in terms of mindset, yes. I think, I understand. But I also relate more to the people that are like me. Mm. So to have somebody that is speaking that same language that I need, not mm. language in the sense of language, no, but sure. in the sense of science. Yes. Um, there was a, a program called Mahayai, that really helped. And it was at that moment where I found out about emotional intelligence. Interesting. Is that program still online? It's still online. I'll grab the link of you and we'll place it in the I'll, show notes. I, I would, I would if you be, feel it would be helpful course, for our Arab viewers. Absolutely. Yeah. And Is it in Arabic? It's in Arabic. Okay. And uh, that's like, then when I, when I heard him, it's like, that's it. I need to find who I am because emotional intelligence is all about finding yourself, controlling yourself, mm. being able to work, to get that drive in the morning to work. That's number three. Fourth, being able to deal with society and handling society. So five things. That's it. That's why this is happening. I said, it's like a light bulb, but I was still depressed. But at least I found it was that hope. It was that hope. Yeah. Also, YouTube helped me with 
discovering more about religions because I needed to find that path. I never stopped praying, never stopped reading Quran, never went out of the path of, of actually doing the actual prayers. But that belief that tomorrow will be better mm. to me comes when you believe in that energy, that, that superpower, that, that God, that Allah. I found out through YouTube that all religions believe in the same thing. Mm. We always believe in a superpower that is controlling, that is there, that, is, that has our back. And to me, it clicked. This is so powerful. Having faith to have hope is that candle. It is. The worst thing I could see in someone, I travel a lot, I've been to over a hundred countries. Sometimes I meet people and I see that that candle is not lit. Mm. And I'm like, that is the worst thing that could ever happen to you. It's not getting bankrupt. It's not not having the resources. It's not where you are today. Sure. It's that tomorrow will be a better day. Absolutely. That single-handedly can turn your life around. Very much so. I always tell my son, I said, Mom, you know teenagers today stress way more than we used to stress. Yes. And I say, I tell him, Dawood, you need to believe that believing in the superpower in Allah or God or energy is not just any belief. Mm. It's believing that He, no matter what, will give you better. Mm. That better is the key. We say, inshallah. That's yeah? right. God willing. God willing. God willing because it will happen. Yes. Because we're positive about it. But we've used, we're used to saying, inshallah, because it, it's not going to happen. You know why? Because we, we missed the belief that it's the goodness that, yes, tomorrow is better. Mm. Why? Because turmoil takes a long time. It takes mm. a very long time to, to become better. And tomorrow is metaphorical. Absolutely. It could be five years It could tomorrow. be five years. It could be ten years. And you want me to be patient for ten years? Mm. For God, I'm, uh, God's sake, I'll lose myself. I'll lose my mind. But if that's your journey, that's your journey. That's your journey. In Arabic, they call it maktub, right? Maktub. It's written. It's written the way it is supposed to be. Yeah. And that's why I say, if I were to go back, I would not change a wink. And because of my depression, I came to know about emotional intelligence. I learned more about religions. And then I also found out that I need to get help. Mm. So that was, YouTube was the instigator. That was it. To go and get help. A lot of people were talking on, on, on YouTube. A lot of people were, you know, a lot of doctors. Uh, it was booming at the time. Yeah. And I did get my help. But when I went and I got my help, I didn't dare to ask anybody to give me a doctor's name. As usual, I was alone. I had to do the research alone. So I got on Healthcare City. Their website, amazing. They have mm. everything there. They mm. even have the names of doctors. I did an educated scan. I looked at who I felt would be the best for me. Sure. And is and that I, because of shame? Yes. Embarrassment. Yes. That you're different, that you are failing. Yes. At leading yourself, no, leading your no life. No one wants to say that. No one Nobody wants You don't to wake say up that. in the morning going, I'm a failure. Yeah, my, my name is Kevin, I'm a failure. Yeah. yeah. And I get it. I completely get mm. it. And that's why when I meet people today, I'm not a coach, I'm not a life coach. Mm. I'm, I've, I'm doing work more on an academia side to improve leadership, to improve the leader's self, to be able to lead other teams. Mm. And I always tell people, failing is good. Mm. It's a good feeling after you succeed yes because it's the hindsight that will make you realize yes you realize you say wow i would not be here if i did if it wasn't, wasn't for that there. yeah last 20 years of failure absolutely okay so you look at the list and the name popped out for the you the name popped out and i went mm -hmm. and i got help i went through some medication and uh, it was it was the beginning of that getting better mm -hmm. i had the science my journey was clear, not really, but at least I knew that I'm a Muslim, solid. There is a power, solid. I know what's going on in my head and mind. I got this, this psychological bit of it. Mm. I know that I have to start taking charge of my life. I needed that little bit of medication that would push me. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. And then you also then learn about emotional intelligence. Yes, and that was that was the cream. What did you learn? I learned that emotional intelligence will help you 80% in the successful to be to, to lead a successful job and career goes to 80%, 80% of it goes to emotional intelligence. It's been used, it's been overtly used over the last decade. Kind of like leadership. People so, just throw it around. Yeah. If you had to break it down to fundamentals or core, how would you explain emotional intel intelligence? One, knowing yourself. Mm -hmm. Who am I? And it's not about what color I like. It's not about the food that I like. Mm -hmm. It's more about looking really and being able to face your ego and say, I'm actually good at one, two, three, like skills. Mm -hmm. I'm actually a kind person. Mm -hmm. I'm an angry person. I'm not a humble person. To be able to really break down who you are as charisma, as personality, as character. And is this the stage where you need to be accepting of it or is this just the first stage of highlight or break down who you are? Break down who you are. Okay. To break down who you are, it means look at yourself in the mirror. Correct. Facing your ego. How many people are willing to do for that? Example. Yes. Yeah. How many people are willing to do that? Not much because the question is easy. The answer is super it's difficult. So hard. So if I want to look at my ego and say, I'm actually, I'm actually good, you'll be able to say that. But I'm actually not very humble. I don't want to see that. So that's where it becomes difficult and tricky. And if you don't have those little things that make you a leader, how on earth are you a CEO and leading people? CEOs, ministers, managers, yeah. leaders, all that. It all, that is that I respect, but it all goes down to the basics. Mm. And that is human relationships, yes. human yes. values. Absolutely. You could have everything in the world, but if you're friggin' damn rude, people will hate to be around you. If you're that arrogant, people who just don't wanna. They have to deal with you, but the one time you are not anymore in that position, they will throw you like a ton of garbage. Yes. Yeah. You know, so it's, you know, it's just, it's there's just that, how... There's that saying, uh, careful how you treat people on the way up because you're going to see the same people on the way down. Absolutely. I can't remember where, where I read it or someone said it. It's so true. Yeah, I think I, I heard someone say it. It was really good. It stayed with me. I was listening to, I think it was Simon Sinek, and he was saying that you're only worth a paper cup. Interesting. And the reason he says that, he said, I was getting on a train, and I saw the CEO of uh, some, some big company conglomerate, and he was once upon a time up there, and that day that he left, he was dragging his luggage on the on the train, nobody was helping him here at once upon a time he had people running for him. And then when he got on that plane, uh, on, that, on that train, he used to be served in nice cups. Now he's being served paper cup. Yeah. So you're really worth paper cup, don't forget that. Yes. It, it is quite interesting. And if you always remind yourself of that, mm. in a good way, when you, it's having that humility. That humility. Mm. Yeah. You look at all these CEOs and leaders and all the science they have and all the experience they have in their domain and in their careers. But what really comes to make him a successful person are the people under him. Mm -hmm. And people are not going to be all the way you want them to be. It is your job and your duty as a leader to bring the best out of them. Absolutely. In actual fact, great leaders, I mean, we, when we look at leadership, the, the thought about leadership is you're leading from the top. Mm -hmm. When the greatest of all leaders across, you know, uh, and here is a great example with, you know, Sheikh Mohammed, the ruler of Dubai, um, Sheikh Zayed, the great leaders in the Middle East, greater leaders in whether it's countries or companies, the greatest of all leaders understand that it's not the model of being from the top. They actually go underneath the people and... Upwards. Yeah, you, you put, you know, you're giving them wind under their wings. That's the mark of great leaders. So true. But before you even look at people, emotional intelligence 101, look at yourself first. Yes, absolutely. Look at yourself first. Why? Because when you realize 
that you're not as good as you thought you were mm-hmm. in terms of skills, in terms of a, a person and personality and charisma and character. You're not in a place to judge others because that's what we do very well. Mm-hmm. We are great judges. Mm-hmm. We don't look at why this person is acting this way. Why is he not performing? There must be something going on. Do I really care about him or do I care about the product? To care about the product, you need to take care of your people. Mm. They will give you the best when they know you really, truly appreciate and love and care them, mm. care for them. Absolutely. And that's, that's, that's what emotions, emotional intelligence starts with. You start with yourself. Try okay. to fix who you are. So, so first thing, you, write that up. you ask okay. yourself. Next thing, you try to fix yourself. Literally, in, in layman terms. Right? Okay. So yeah, absolutely. Fix it. How do you do it? That takes time. That takes perhaps five years. Okay. But it's the desire to it's wanting still, to, of it's wanting to be better. Wanting to be better and actually taking proactive steps to really changing. Like, can you give me a couple of examples? Like, what did you say? Okay, the, this is the reality of who Maya is. This is what I need to work on. I'll give on. you an example. Yeah. I am the, I'm not the risk taker type whatsoever. Okay. Why? I found out that it comes to fear. We, in general, fear is the highest, most used emotion in humanity. Sure. We are fearful of everything and anything we can imagine. Anything that we're stopping, stopping us t- uh, from doing is because of fear. Mm-hmm. Fear of failure, number one. But for me, f- fear was, was a big thing that was controlling my being. I had, to, I had to not get rid of it because fearful is good to have. But I had it keeps to you min- safe sometimes. It keeps you safe. Yeah. It's a safety mechanism. But I had to make sure that I managed it properly. That if I don't improve my fearness and this fearful feeling that I have, I will not be able to see opportunities coming my way. It mm. will shadow and it will hide what I want in life. For you to see that clear vision, you need to get rid of all these negative emotions that cloud your judgment. Mm. Understand why is it there. So fear to me was because my father, God bless him, he was so protective of me. That to me made me put barriers. You know, I, th- I thank him so much for who I am today because uh, the kindness I have and the respect that I have to people has come from my parents, mm. how they raised us. Mm. They're very, uh, they're very uh, understanding of people. They're very respectful people. Mm. And that has, in, in, that has been instilled in me and my brother. But at the same time, the fear was always there. I'm afra- I used to be afraid to take the next step, mm-hmm. afraid. Although I have confidence. Yes. But still, it hasn't been used to my fullest potential. I'll give you an example. So if I, were to, if I were to be on stage or on camera, I would stress. Although, mm. I have, although when I get on stage, I know what to do. It took me a while to perfect it. And it's that realization that confidence isn't necessarily Has not, not, being, not being fearless. Exactly. It's not the absence of fear. No. It's actually being, having that fear but being able to overcome it. That's confidence. That's confidence. So that's something that emotional intelligence helped me get over. Mm. People, unfortunately, could blame, could blame what, for me, it was something like fear. But there are people that go through turmoil because of their parents, sure. breakup, sure. or divorce, sure. or death. Yes, none of which is easy. You know, or abuse. Yes. What will happen is that they will turn against them mm. and say, I hate you mm. for what you've done to me. Emotional intelligence says, no, you need to face it with intention to improve, Mm. not to hurt others. Yes, not to blame. Not to blame. Mm. So you go through it, you go through the blaming process, but then you end up thinking, okay, I need, I'm doing this for what reason to improve? To improve, you need to forgive. Yes. Because if we take the route, and many of us do, and I have in the past as well, for however long, whether it's a minute, an hour, a day, a week, a month, or a year, or 10 years, or your whole lifetime, the place of blaming others does not help you move forward. No. The moment you realize, okay, it is what it is for whatever the reason, whoever is at fault, as a leader or as a person who wants to move forward, I take responsibility for who I am, where I am today, and do what I need to do to improve. True. Yeah. The other thing emotional intelligence taught me, 
for me, not only to see opportunities, but you know when we talk about the law of attraction mm. and the power to be able to 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 have opportunities come to you mm -hmm. rather than you going to them. Sure. To be able to get that kind of energy flowing and connecting with the universe and what you want, you need to be clear of all those negative intentions towards others. Mm -hmm. All those negative feelings you have towards others, you need to clear that out, like flush it. Mm. To flush it, you need to start from the roots. The roots, what is causing your pain? Mm. Because whatever pain you're going through is, is manifesting subconsciously and affecting your job, affecting your career, job. affecting what you really want in life. And how you're dealing with people. How yeah. you're dealing with people. So to go back and say, I really want it. Some people, whoever they want to face has died or yeah. had died. What do they do? There are, there are ways to sort that out. You can see either a life coach or a therapist. I'm not in, I'm not in a place to, to give them advice in that position sure. because I haven't been there. But it's first it comes down from a, a place of choice. You choose to, you have to not blame and want to get better. That's a choice you can make. A choice that if you want to improve in your career, like literally your career, sure. you have to and improve life in general, you have to improve and work on yourself first. Sure. Then work hard. You clear, you flush all these emotions out. Mm. The third thing in emotional intelligence is how do you wake up in the morning with that drive yes, to succeed? That's right. How? Because we see a lot of people who are just dragging themselves around and to they work. complain, I'm not motivated. It's because they, they either hate what they do or they're dealing with so much pain that and they don't want to face mm. they're afraid of facing it because they know they will, it will break them it'll push put them back and that's why people go to addiction of some kind of sort mm. and when you ask that question of yourself how did you figure out your answers or what did you do it never to it bring was, out the drive it, it was never i have to say it was never a question and answer and really actually yeah. doing it I guess you're mulling over it, right? It was it was something that I kept working on, mm. improving on myself, and not just improving on myself. I had that patience that tomorrow will get better. When you start taking that medication, you start getting better. You actually start thinking clearly, because what is depression? It's a chemical imbalance. Mm. For people that don't know, it's literally a chemical imbalance. You go, you take medication, the balance becomes better. The mind is between the intellect, the brain, sorry, is between the intellect and the mind. Mm -hmm. The mind is what controls your emotions. The intellect is what controls your logic. What the chemical imbalance is, is that the mind, your emotion, clouds or overtakes your judgment. Mm -hmm. That's why you're emotional about everything. You're either angry or like the Joker laughing all the time, mm. you know? Yeah or crying all the time. Mm. You're unable to think straight. So when you take the right path, mentally you improve that intellect, but it's still not as well as you thought it should be. I know all this, how come I'm not using my logic? That's when I took the decision to get, to get help. Slowly with time, it just over, it just subsides and you begin to think normal. That's when the first door opened mm. and my husband said, Maya, why don't you do your PhD? I think he, it was his, it was his uh, suggestion. You have your master's from the States. Don't you think it's about time and you're good at long life learning, teaching in university? Because during the five years, I also tried to find what am I good at? Mm. I applied to over 33 jobs. I still get uh, refusals. I was not called to not one interview. And you're not, at the time, you were not allowed to, not not allowed, but it's not, it's not something that customary where you go and give your CV and say, you know, and people actually see you and say, oh, this is a good candidate. No, I was refused. Imagine you're, you're, you're even refused career-wise. You don't know what you want to do. But I also, I tried to teach in universities 
and it, it did work. And I used to love it. I used to long to wait it to, to, to go and, 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 and teach. Interesting. And how, can I ask you, how did you deal with that period of being rejected and feeling lost? Because we spend, many of us, through different phases of our lives, we spend time being lost. I don't know what I want to do. At the time, how I dealt with it, yeah. I was more broken. It like because it, rejection doesn't help. It doesn't. Yeah. It's the opposite of a pat it on the back. It doesn't. And don't forget, you're not in your proper mindset. You're not in your proper uh, emotional uh, balanced state. Mm. So you're going to feel even more broken and more useless and more worthless and more, why am I even living? Which is not a great place. Which, so, which is not so a good place. How, do, how were you able to come out and I guess find the, the, the role of teaching at universities? My, I want to tell you that my special needs child, mm. looking at them, but at her specifically and saying she needed me, I had to hang in there, kept me going. That was the reason. The university bit came, uh, there are no coincidences in life. Sure. Everything is meant to be the way it is. The, 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 the university roles came because there was an opportunity, a window that they were looking for somebody. And I, had, I do have experience teaching in universities, even when I was principal and vice principal. Mm -hmm. So, and it was through a friend. So I applied and that opened doors to me. But I stayed in, that, in those little universities. But today I look back and say, my God, thank God for them. They, they, those two hours I used to go and teach as an adjunct faculty, like gave me hope, gave me light. Mm. It made me feel, okay, I like this. I, I like this. Yes. You know. Uh, there is something that will keep you going in those deepest times. Yes. There will be somebody, some event, some, some hope. You have to be hopeful. You have to. It will. It will. It, yes. There will be something that will pull you. Just, I remember feeling that this feeling of drowning mm. and that I was right there with the water and my, the tip of my nose was barely off like that was showing that I was able to grab air. I remember that. Like, I remember that was the visual. If I were to explain to you exactly how I felt, I always wanted to come out for, a, for that breathing moment. Mm. That's, when you, that's how you are when you're depressed. Wow. Some people don't have imagine. that. I can't it's, imagine. It's, um, but I'm telling you, it made me who I am today. I mean, I must admit that I've gone through down times for years um, but the only thing that kept me going is that hopefulness mm. that was I don't know somehow was instilled it was there it was just there tomorrow will be better whatever it is it's gonna be all right but that's because your journey mm. is a different one yeah and it's, this is really important to realize that whatever your tomorrow is that timeline uh, you, no one knows Absolutely. But there is a better tomorrow. There is a better tomorrow. But then my tomorrow will probably take a little bit of time to come yeah. the way I want it to. Mm. And um, hanging in there with that belief that it'll be better again. Yes. You believe? Believe in what? Believe that it'll get better. Yes. I always used to say, this too shall pass. And my daughter, she says, Mom, you always say that. It's not that easy. I said, you're right. But as a parent, and what I've gone through, it's my role. And I feel like I'm obliged, even with other people that approach me, that I tell them, trust me, I know. That's why I said sharing should be caring, really, truly, not just with children, but even with adult lifelong learners. Yeah. The late Jim Rowan, just mentioning what your daughter said, um, used to say, you know, don't wish for it to be easy. Mm. Wish to get better. Yeah. Uh, and that's really in line with taking control of the situation and going, okay, I need to do something, but it requires hopefulness. You know, I always feel like in this journey that I was alone, yes, but looking back, I really wasn't. Yes, on a larger scheme of things. It's, I cannot stress enough that it is meant to be the way it was. Even when that first door opened, I felt like I left a closed room, a circle. I don't know why it was always a circle. I felt like I was in a dome mm. with no windows. Mm. And when that first door opened, 
and I stepped out. I can see myself stepping out and closing the door with hesitation. With hesitation, I was, I was introduced to the world. That's exactly how I felt. And that step took a lot of courage and a lot of um, a push from me because when you're depressed, you're ha- in a weird way, you're happy the way you are mm-hmm. because you're comfortable. To be to challenge yourself out is not something you need. No. It's not a, it's not a burden. So, no, I, I'd rather be this way. I'm, I'm, at least I can handle this. I don't want to handle anything. In, uh, this is familiar. This is familiar. I know this. Mm. I don't want to do any more. That's exactly what it is. In any situation in life. Yes. You know, you're like, you're in this abusive relationship. Why the hell are you in this? Like, the outsider. She said, I know this and that. But then you're actually comfortable that way. You actually like it that way. But you don't really like it. So, it's interesting what how the psyche yes is and it's up to us to put the word out yeah. if i don't speak you don't speak she doesn't speak then why aren't we using social media properly it's it's this this is it this is why social media was we can use it for we good we can use it for goodness and yeah. the betterment of humanity 100% yeah so you did you did your role 2 hours at a time i did teaching i did and then take us through the next step the next step was um, I remember I taught in one university for a year, adjunct faculty. And then I was speaking on the stage once as a chairperson of the board. At Dubai. It was a graduation. And there was a, there was a chair, the chair of another university that was a VIP guest. And when he saw me speak on stage, he said, I need you. I want you in my university. So I started teaching in two universities. The feeling that you're wanted is a good feeling. Mm. It's something that it makes you feel alive and wanted how wanted for the betterment of others sure. at that time you don't see that you see that oh wow i was headhunted or i was chosen it makes you feel good that went on for another year and then my husband said my why don't you apply for a phd and i thought hmm that's actually a good idea i applied for the phd and they said you've missed the deadline you have to wait another year. Mm. Can you imagine waiting another year? That broke me. And I did wait another year. But then I had to apply after eight months. I took my IELTS. And then I... Uh, this was a PhD for on emotional intelligence. On emotional intelligence. Yeah. And they didn't have anything on emotional intelligence. And I, and I didn't... Uh, you know, when you apply for the application, they actually, they actually ask you for an abstract. And it was in that abstract that I said, I want to do professional development. I always wanted to do adult learning. And I wanted to be in emotional intelligence. And the only PhD program they have is for education, education and leadership. In that abstract, I made it clear, I am not going to invest my time, but in adult learning. I, that is a great period in my, in my career high school and, and, and below, but I'm, I'm grateful for it. I wouldn't have been the same, the person I am today, but I want to move forward in what I want. It's about time. Mm. And I let it go. The thing that hit me and struck me in my PhD application is that I put in my mind that I will be accepted, that they're lucky to have me. I don't know why I thought so. So I'm, I'm a unique person. I always thought I was unique. I'm a unique person. I have a unique abstract. I should be accepted. I never doubted that I wouldn't be. Then they asked for an interview. I went for the interview, and it was a presentation, and I presented. I asked that I want to be speaking on emotional intelligence and its effect on leadership for the leaders of Dubai and leaders of uh, the government in general, but also for UAE. That presentation, they asked me, they said, in a week's time, we'll send you whether accepted or not. I was accepted. When they invited us for, to, to, to introduce us to the team, team of professors, the team of professors sat us down and they said, congratulations, you were chosen. Only you four were chosen amongst 400 applications. Mm. And it hit me and I thought, wow, 
So if you actually put something to your mind and don't draw any obstacles and think positive that there's no coming back, it'll happen. I'm, I'm all in and you get out of your own way. Yeah, and I want what I want. Then I learned something about energy, that if you think good, you get good. Mm. But if you doubt it, even 1%, it's, it doesn't mean it's not going to happen, but it means it'll take longer yeah. until you really are, they say you really are ready. I say, until you really believe. Yeah, when you exude the belief. The belief that it is gonna come. Yes. Then it will come. Such as, such as, you think of your brother and he walks in, mm -hmm. that second. Yes. Or you think of somebody. And the phone and rings. That's the phone rings. Happens all the time. Right, why mm -hmm. is that? Because you thought of them, A, in a good way. Mm -hmm. You were thinking uh, clearly and you actually had the intention that I would like to see this person, yet you didn't, you didn't say it. Mm -hmm. You get it. Mm -hmm. You didn't doubt, no way, no. As if you're in a parking lot mm -hmm. and you're looking for a parking That's spot, right. yes. you manifest, even before manifesting, you actually say, I'm gonna find a parking spot. And you, people are like in lines and two rounds, of work and boom you have a parking spot why is that that belief that you're gonna get it such is life but i learned the bigger the ask the longer it will take that's a good one that's a good one the bigger the ask you need that patience you need the skills you need to build all these things that will take time yeah. doesn't mean you're not ready because not ready is giving you that negative uh, connotation yeah. that you're not good enough now. No, no. It just if you want to build Burj Khalifa, which is 828 it's just meters, take time. the foundation alone is going to take a long time Absolutely. because you're not building a one-level apartment. Absolutely. You you're building a, a, a huge tower. Yeah. yeah. Also. Well, that's it. Yes, yeah, true. We always hear people saying, "What you want wants you." Yeah. What you want yes, wants yes, you. Absolutely. Yeah. If you wanted that bad. It also wants you that bad. Yes. But if you want it half, half, or 1% minus, or 2% minus, it's gonna want you 1% minus, 2% minus. It's, it's that energy that, it's interesting. We're all physics. Yes. Physics, literally physics. We omit waves. So if you throw a stone in the water, you're going to see the actual That's right, waves, the ripple effect, right? right? Yeah. If you do it also, and you do it on the sand, you'll see a smaller ripple effect because of the density of the sand. Mm -hmm. So we are, if you throw the same stone in air, do you see the ripple effect? No, but does it mean it's not there? It's there, but you don't see it because it's not visible. That's why it's, it's happened, and I'm sure it's happened to you. You're at an event or you're in a room, someone walks in and you go, I like the vibe of this person. Oh, I don't like the vibe. Those Absolutely. are vibrations. You are that same stone yep. that was thrown into air. Mm. Only you are a living being. So it's continuous. It's continuous. It's a soul that's mm. thriving. It's what's here. Mm. What you intend. Are you all about good intentions or bad intentions? And that's why when you walk by and open a door, people in the room say, I like that guy, although I don't know you. Yes, absolutely. Why? Because as you're walking, the ripple effect, physics, adds on to it is that happiness mood Correct. or sadness mood. Is it like mood. this or is it like that? Yes. So what you want wants you. A question I want to ask you based on what you said is um, dealing with people. Mm -hmm. Because this is important. Um, I've just picked up a book which I'm going to read which is... Um, called Surrounded by Idiots. Mm. Great title. Nice. And I was like, I'm taking this book. Nice. <laughs> the premise of the book is it feels like you're surrounded by idiots, but if you actually realize that it's not the case, we're just all very different. Mm. So from a, from a perspective of someone who studied emotional intelligence, who applies it, what are your thoughts in terms of suggestions for people that are watching and listening? Mm. Tips on how to deal with people or how to better deal with people. Okay. So here's, I'll tell you a little bit of a, let's say my story okay. before, so that we can get to that point. Sure. 
when I started my PhD, I was supposed to do something on technology through, for, for emotional intelligence, but I had to do it through technology. I didn't know any technology. I only had social media. I only had Instagram. And at the time, I only had 600 followers. I told her, I, don't, I only know this. She said, you know, there's something called micro-learning videos uh, that you can do people now. Their attention span is one minute, two minutes maximum. And you can talk more about emotional intelligence in that regard. And I did. It boomed from 600 to 7,000 followers. For somebody that doesn't sell makeup, fashion, uh, you know, it, to me that was a, that was a big boom That's in six fine, months. Yeah. I, social media taught me so much. It gave me a lot of confidence about people. Mm. I learned A, don't do things on social media that you don't do in real life. So That means be authentic. Be authentic. I am an authentic person, so when I, when I meet people, how to deal with people, I always assume best. Mm -hmm. That's a great thing. I always do that. It could be something that people think differently of. Assume the best. Today I will tell you that I do assume the best, but trust, you need to wait a little bit mm -hmm. to push that full trust in. Okay. So assume betterment. But don't, don't give it all, like don't give it your all. Be kind, be respectful, have that, your values, never let go of your values. Mm. The values of dealing with people and being, and making sure that everybody can teach you something. Sure, that's an attitude. You would learn yeah. even from the person that's cleaning your doorstep. Yes. Or cleaning our streets. I always, um, I always like to talk to these people that are, uh, cleaners or workers, I learn from them and it puts me at a level where I, not to appreciate who I am, not at all, but to understand more about their emotions and their feelings mm. and who they are and what they went through, uh, to be able to, there's that, there's that interest that I love to learn more about who are these people, how different are they, we are not that different. Mm. It's just the fact we didn't choose to be who we are. He didn't choose to be who we are. So we're not different. We're actually the same. So I remember thinking, okay, so if somebody when he says salam, salam alaikum or hello in real life, I would respond. Yes. I do the same on social media. If somebody says salam, I say salam alaikum. When intentions change, that's when you start changing your language However, with class, with respect, hmm. remember, I always remind myself, I, I always remind myself with why I even started. I didn't choose to start. I didn't choose social to get media. on social media. Yeah. It was something that was thrown at me because of my research. Mm -hmm. When it boomed, I was thinking to myself, Maya, this has got to be something. It's got to be part of my journey. Mm. It took a while until op social media opened doors for me. Social media actually got the marketing part out that I began training for governments. Mm -hmm. People started saying, okay, she has something to say. Why couldn't we bring her in for sure. a training? And social media can get to your head, such as life. Yes. When you become famous or rich or you feel like you're different than everybody else, you start looking at people down. You look, you say, you're saying, these people are, are not who I am. I learned that even the thought, the thought that you don't say, the thought that you're better than people, there you need to control and, and retrack and go back and say, oops, here we go again. No, 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 Maya, this is not you. Uh, this is not why you're not to lose this, yourself. Not to lose yourself and lose who you are. Mm. Always stick to your values. Yeah. Our values are beautiful. The reason I asked about people is because there are a lot of people who would like to lead teams and they'd like to create high-performing teams. And they look at great leaders who have achieved so many things and every great leader knows that they can't do it on their own. Mm. He or she is able to achieve a vision because of the people that can come together and work together. Sure. But the reality is whether it's five or 500 people, just even with five, hmm. they're just different characters, different things. But they have one thing in common. They're not selfish. 
all these leaders we hear and yes. we speak of, the successful ones, yes. are not selfish. So a great tip, like a first tip would be look for the best in people. Look for the best in people. Get inspired. Imagine if you could present yourself, your thoughts, and your ideas with clarity and confidence. Imagine if you could speak to influence and impact. Imagine if you could communicate like a commanding and charismatic leader. Well, you can, given the right information and the investment of effort from your end. How do I know that? As a public speaking coach, I work with CEOs, world leaders, and presidents. And when they hire me, they expect nothing short of results. And over the years, it's been two decades now, two challenges have risen for me being unable to help the majority of people. I'm usually on a plane, with the majority of my time being booked a good year or two in advance. And my one-on-one -on -one session to work with someone in person generally starts at $20,000. So we solved the problem by making my public speaking course available for you online. Everything that I teach my clients when I'm working one-on-one, -on -one, thoughts, tips, strategies, how to do things, all on video, all sequenced in the right order for you to be able to watch, re-watch, practice, and refine your presentation, your speaking, and your overall communication skills. And guess what? You will get results. Now, you can have this course, not for the $20,000 that my clients pay me when we work one-on-one, -on -one. you can have it for $9.97. That's right, just $9.97. You might be thinking, well, why are you offering something that you charge $20,000 for, for $9.97? It's simple, because those who want to work with me one-on-one -on -one will still hire me. But for many whom I might be out of their budget, this is a great way to develop their communication skills, to cut through the noise, to rise above the rest, and to beat their competition. If you're serious about wanting to develop your skills, to be able to present your thoughts, your ideas, and yourself, with clarity and confidence, to be able to speak, to influence and impact, and to communicate like a confident and charismatic leader, then this course is for you. Go on to kevinabdurrahman.org forward slash course and get started today. Bring the best out of people. How do you do that? By looking at them really and saying, okay, in a team, for example. Yes. Some people are better than others. Doesn't mean they're better. It means that these guys are better than these guys in X. Yes. So my duty as a leader is to bring out the best in every one of them. Remember, we're all on this earth for a reason. Mm -hmm. We all have our journeys. We all have our visions. We all have our objectives. Yeah. We, all, we all think differently and we have different abilities. So you could be good in public speaking, then if this guy is good in public speaking, I will always put him to be on that stage marketing for the company mm -hmm. because he's good. Mm -hmm. Somebody else is good in strategy. I'll do that. But don't blame the public speaking guy on why for not, work why on he's not doing is not, not working on strategy. That's how people thrive. And that's how people look up to their leaders because your lead, as a leader, you need to believe in your people. You need to believe in their, their abilities and their capabilities. What would be the, the, I suppose, if there is a shortcut, what would be the hack for leaders or individuals who want to bring out the best in people? So let's say they check the mark of saying, okay, I want to bring the best in people. Mm -hmm. I will look at them in the best possible way in terms of achievement. How do I figure out very quickly with the people that I have, who's good at what? What would you recommend? What tools to use? I would start with when you're clear on... Okay, here's, here's how I would answer that. The more you're interactive with people, mm -hmm. listening skills is very important. Observing skills is very important. Like you observe. Yes. You don't talk too much. You read. It doesn't have to be read. You can be an audiovisual sure. learner like myself. You could be a kinesthetic. As long as you educate yourself on how to bring to have that eye for others. A good leader is somebody that gets it just from the first few sentences. You know, you have that gut instinct. That believe in your gut. 
if there's something I would say, look at who you are. Listen to this. Mm. This is mostly, mostly right. This gut means truth. But sometimes we don't like to look at it. Yeah. Sometimes we, Because we don't like the answers. We don't like the answers. Yeah. You really like this person. But your gut says... Not for this role. Not for this one. Yeah. Either you find them another role where your gut is satisfied and the gut thing comes with experience. I was going to say, because this comes, this requires a whole heap of fine tuning. Absolutely. Right? So if someone doesn't have that level of experience, what should they look for in individuals? Or if they don't have the opportunity to hire, they're just given a team of five mm. and they need to be able to achieve an outcome or work on a project, how would they be able to bring out the best in their people? Well, I'll tell you something. It's not an easy task. No, it's not. That's why I'm asking it. <laughs> and it's something that yet until today, people are trying to find the answer to. All you could do is do the research about this person before hiring them. Yes. Ask the right questions as you're in that interview. Do those reference checks that uh, that will satisfy you. Yeah, but the thing is, we live in a world Still, where people walk, talk so much. They talk absolutely. the sun, the moon, and they can absolutely. bring you the whole planet overnight. Absolutely. These are some of and the, that comes reality. These are some of the risks <clears throat> that a leader has to take. <clears throat> There's an example that came to my mind now. There was a gentleman at um, Bain Consulting Group. Mm. And he goes, everything comes with a manual, mm. right? Um, a car comes with a manual. The camera comes with a manual. Um, you know, laptop comes with a manual. Your phone comes with a manual if you want to use it. Everything comes with a manual, but people don't. Mm. Wouldn't it be awesome if you could actually have a manual for each person? So what he actually did was he goes here, he created, I think, a sheet where he then noted down. He goes, here's how you can get out the best in me. This oh. is how I best operate. This is, these are my strengths. These are my weaknesses. And this, what, this is what brings out the best in me. And then he asked a few other people to write an assessment about him. Hmm. And that made me think, this is interesting. If the people I'm going to work with, if I could have everyone write and figure out, let's say, for example, if I figure out for my brother, because we're very different. Right. And if he knew a lot of things, because with years of experience, this wisdom has come of suffering, just <laughs> even between the two of us. Right. He's laughing, it's true. Um, then we're very different. He is so analytical. He likes to know every single thing. I'm like, God, right. buddy, I'm thirsty. Water, excellent. Yeah. He's the kind of person who goes, one second, I need to read every single aspect. I need to make sure it's good. No, this is not good. That is better. And we can just go into a whole right. heap of frustration. But if I know, if I have a one pager from him that says, I'm this kind of a person, hmm. then I'd be like, okay, in order for me to communicate with him better, Instead of saying, thirsty, here's water. I'd be like, hey, here are the details. Take your five minutes. Where can I? Come back, come back to me and let me know what's the best one. Right. So I'm able to, to get the best out of them. I have, I have an answer for you. Yes. In fact, those big companies, international conglomerates mm -hmm. that have thousands of employees and branches around the world, how do you think they hire their VPs, their vice presidents? Their CV is amazing. They do a psychometric test. Sure. Because it's all about people, skills, relationships. Absolutely. That's what I'm saying. The science of emotional intelligence is what counts today. Mm -hmm. It's actually the number one skill that is needed for 2020 and 2021 from the World Economic Forum report to lead in the world of economy. So it's, say, for example, I'd like to have it. It's, what does it require of me have, to do? We are, we are in a world of artificial intelligence. Yes. And it, people are very afraid of being replaced. Yes. But that's so fear-based, right? That's fear-based. That was my question. That's, Come back that's, to me. Yes. That's fear-based. Yes. And for, for CEOs, you, you're still going to need people to work hand in hand with uh, the robotics, mm. artificial intelligence, but the roles, the roles. So what you learned 10 years ago and what I learned 10 years ago is not going to be relevant for the next wave. Absolutely. So the proper leader, why psych psychometric testing 
testing is needed is because how are you going to handle the shift in careers that is inevitable of your team members? Mm. How are you ha- going to handle that change? How are you going to manage that change and still end up triumphed and still produce and still come out with numbers? Mm. It takes a lot of patience, perseverance, belief in your team. You have to have a vision in others. You have to believe that they're capable. You shouldn't, you should, you you know, at the point in time, a leader will doubt their skills as well because things are not not working. Mm. Leadership is not anymore mainly based on expertise and CV that they have come up with. It's really based on how do you manage the wave of people around you and how are you able to really um, produce numbers with the beautiful people you have that are all skilled. Who are all very different, are who will all, all come with their sort with of their challenges and differences. And challenges. What would be some quick fire tips if there were four or five tips to help with developing that skill? Because you're saying emotional intelligence is the yeah. number one skill. Yeah. That's gonna be required of every single leader. Mm-hmm. What would be, in, from your perspective and your experience, what would be the tips to at least get, get individuals who are watching this um, or listening to it uh, to get started in developing that skill? Okay, number one, meditate. Interesting, I wouldn't have thought that. Mm, you have to sit alone and reorganize and prioritize what is most important to you in life, to you as a person. Because this applies not only just in the corporate world, no. this applies to you even as... On a personal level. On a, yeah. On a personal level. So you need to meditate, and I meditate, you can do yoga, whatever, but for me, meditation, I do, I, this is why I love my walks, because to me it's therapy. I not only connect, I not only take a break from all the noise around me, but I also have that time to reflect. Mm, it's your time. It's my time. Mm. And I like to do what I like to do. I even put on some music. And I like Arabic music. It just puts me in another wavelength. Yes. And I feel that literally, I've, I've always felt like if I were not a human being, I would have been a bird. Okay. It feels like I'm flying and I'm able to reflect. So meditation, to reflect. Um, always keep in tuned with your values as a human being mm-hmm. and know that what you care about are the same things that others care about as well. Okay. So I remember always sitting in uh, conferences and coming out and speaking. And I'm only, a, I'm still a scholar, you know, and there are professors sitting down. I always felt like I'm less. But then one day I was, I was watching a professor get ready to talk and I was observing them. And I saw that she was, she was so like stressed out. She was sweating. And we were only about 20 people around. She's about to deliver her research. And I looked at her and I said, listen to me. Only you know what is going to be said. Number two, only you are the expert in this. Nobody else knows anything about this. So don't be afraid. She said, I never thought about it that way. I said, yes. What you worry about, everybody else worries about the same thing. Sure. That's two. Three, be humble. Be humble. Expose yourself a little. Uh, People like to look at their leaders. Misery loves company. It's so true. Mm -hmm. Uh, Show that humility that you two are going through some things. Let, let people let people come up to you and say, it'll be okay. We know how you feel. Let them support you. Mm. That it goes such a long way. Lead by example. So don't ask people to walk the walk if you don't do it. It doesn't make sense to them. It'll always feel that you're, you're up, they're down. Don't arrive late, late at work and then expect everyone and expect else, everybody else to, to be there at 8 a.m. Yeah. Five, believe in your journey. Have a higher purpose. Have that vision. All these are, are really very basic, simple. Simple in the sense that we don't talk theories. We're talking basics. Yes. Instincts. Humanity. That's what leadership... The toughest 
job on this earth is leading others. Mm. It's the toughest thing you could ever imagine. How easy is it for you to go to a job and sit in front of a computer and leave it, take orders, and, and well, not orders, but take whatever tasks you have to do and uh, go back home? Mm. That's the easiest thing ever. But to actually be the person in charge of leading all these people, but not only leading them, producing. And in this country, in the United Arab Emirates, we'd like to be the first, mm. the biggest, the longest, the tallest, not only lead them and produce, but also get into, get an award get regarded mm. that's a lot of stress and not a lot of people are fit for that job mm. or for that role the thing is with great leaders they don't do it for the reward they don't and they also realize that the, the best way to lead others is to lead yourself you know when you lead the right way mm. for the right reasons you will be rewarded without even asking for it and that's what we, when you look at the, the, you know, when we look at all these huge companies mm. like Apple, Tesla, Google, Facebook, mm. et cetera, et cetera, they always did it for the right reasons. Mm. And they were always recognized. I don't think in my mind that they were running after, they were all startups. They were all startups. Mm. Did they think, the, 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 the best that they would have imagined is to make money little bit of money to get them uh, to get them alive yeah, but it really wasn't on it the radar that, they wanted to make a difference they wanted to make a difference yeah. the reason i say that being rewarded we are human beings at the end of the day, the day we are people that are working in government jobs mm. to raise the name of our country the united arab emirates and it is part of the vision of our leaders that we lead with excellence mm. Can you imagine the stress on that leader that, they, that that leader would have? All those levels of stress. Your team will make you. Your team can break you. Mm. It is your choice. Mm. I want to ask, because this is a question that's important when it comes to leadership. Mm. Um, you're great at communicating mm. and you speak well. It's crisp, it's clear, it's commanding. I advise CEOs and world leaders, so I'll help them with their preparation of message, delivering with impact. That's what I do. You do it well. What would be some tips you'd give individuals who would like to grow, who are currently leaders and would like to grow and become leaders in order to be able to speak with impact? Or what did you do to develop your skills? Okay, I'm a believer in breaking down theories into simple, understandable words that the worker on the street, mm -hmm. if, it was, if, if I were to speak to him, he'd get it. Mm -hmm. So I learned... That's actually a powerful tip. It, it is. I learned that the most powerful Theories are the most simplest ones said. Mm -hmm. It doesn't mean they're not deep. It has depth. So when I ask you a question, who are you? Mm. It's three words. It's nothing. And you say, well, you know, I like to go, to, I like to travel. But no, no, no. Who are you? Mm. You're not going to be able to answer mm. unless you actually take a step back and think. In my PhD in Hamdan by Muhammad Smart University, this is something that I learned from my professors. They said, Maya, be as simple as you can be in thought, but deep in analysis, go as deep as you can. Mm -hmm. So behind the screen, you're actually very deep. But whoever is talking to you gets it. Absolutely. Gets it. How he gets it, it's up to him. It's up sure. to him. How he interprets it is up to him. So that's one. Number two. Um, one of the good people I met. His name is Cody Claver. Mm -hmm. He is. Uh, he was a business developer. Now he's he's heading up K twelve in the Middle East. Okay. He told me, Maya. Always learn to speak slowly. Mm -hmm. It comes out clear, and choose your words wisely. Good that one. I learned. Very good. Another one he taught me said, 
important things, don't communicate through email, especially when you're angry. One hundred percent. Because email doesn't show emotion. It doesn't show facial expressions,、mm-hmm. and it doesn't even show your tone. But it'll give you a harsh tone. But the actual, real tone is not going to be you.、Mm. Don't, don't put yourself there. And I really don't. Not on email. Not on WhatsApp. I remember this when I was as principal because he was leading. I remember he they 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 wanted to do a marketing、uh, video. I was. Terrible on camera. Yeah, I didn't know what to say. Although I had done this for two years, and it's my baby. Like I, I, I started this, and I remember him coaching me, and he said, "Maya, say what you do. Don't sugarcoat. Say what you do. Clearly, slowly, with love.、Mm. This is the third thing. Communicate with love. Yes." Communicate with a smile.、Mm. Even if you're a little stressed out, it's okay to show it. Yes. You know,、uh, these are the things that I learned with time. I I didn't get any public speaking coaching. Sure. I didn't. I just practice. Literally, practice makes perfect. And every time I went on stage, because I am a TEDx speaker,、mm-hmm. I spoke early this year、yes. on, in TEDx and. What I did is I re- YouTube again. I researched、mm. what makes a good TED talk, and the tips I got was amazing. If you were to highlight that, what did you do to prepare and plan for your TEDx talk? So not necessarily the topic, but the steps that you've taken. Because professionals who are watching this or listening to this,、yeah. they might have to go into a meeting of five people, or they might have to get up on stage at their annual event and deliver a message to five hundred people. So, from the learning that you did, if you were, if they were to just watch this,、yeah. and you being the summary, what would be the tips you recommend for them to deliver their message with impact? Get inspired. You know this by now that we are the number one YouTube show slash podcast that's coming out of the Middle East from Dubai. If you like the idea of having your brand reach at least a million eyeballs per episode, then feel free to reach out to my office. On KevinAbdulRahman.org. Without further delay, let's continue this great conversation. On TED or or in general? In general, okay. In general, but I guess from your yeah, the yeah, lessons yeah. you had to learn to craft your message and deliver it with impact at TED. Never underestimate your audience. No matter how uh, how uh, what level they have reached in 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 education.、Mm-hmm. So even if they are talking to A group of uh, uh, you know、uh, on the hierarchy, and you're talking to the the the, the drivers or、uh, the workers or. Well, let's say you're a CFO what, and you're speaking to the salespeople. Whatever, never underestimate your audience. Always in your mind believe that they too have、uh, their their、um, intellect.、Mm-hmm. And they too have logic. We as leaders tend to forget. We think that only we know,、mm. and they don't know. This helps me to prepare every time I get on stage. I have to prepare for that audience. Very good. Well said. So even if it's a two minutes, I, I, you, it be, 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 becomes to be accustomed. So you start preparing very quickly on your phone on the way. I know what I have to say. Okay, this is that. Two. Look at history,、mm-hmm. and say, present that history. Always, people like to tell a story.、Mm-hmm. Always tell a story. To conjugate a story, people like to know the beginning.、Mm-hmm. They like to have a middle, and they like the ending.、Mm. So you are the ending. That's why you are there. Look at history. Bring that up. Time yourself. Make your message that clear that if in five minutes, what do I really want to say?、Mm. What do I want to address? For me, in the TED talk, I had exactly twelve minutes, so I had to look at tone, up and down.、Mm-hmm. I had to look at、uh, history.、Mm-hmm. I remember specifically looking at history. I also looked at current research numbers. People love numbers. In fact, it sticks. So, if I were to tell you, did you know? 
that 75% of our daily thoughts are negative. Mm. Like really. Mm. 90% of those thoughts never happen. People were like, oh, really? I didn't know that. Yeah. Today, um, we're campaigning against, uh, not against, but against drugs, but also we're campaigning to help um, those drug addicts that are better to be to for for the market to take them in and to introduce them, them into society. Into society. Mm. And did you know that you actually sixty percent of people falling into addiction, like the reason people fall into addiction, sixty percent of the reason is that there's a, a, a it's actually in your chromosome. You're prone to it. Interesting. Sixty percent. To me, that was crazy. Shocking. Yes. And then 40% is because the environment. So when people, when you look at that, you're thinking, always present numbers. What was your talk about? Tolerance. Interesting. What story did you weave? I had three stories okay. real quickly. And uh, one of them was about a student of mine who was he, she, that walked into my classroom and I didn't know how to like she shocked me. Like I've never dealt with anybody like this before. She looked like a guy, but she was a, she was a girl. And uh, I thought to myself, "Oh Lord, how am I going to deal with this?" And then uh, I thought to myself, "I have to give her at least her her right. At least her. This is me. At least her right. How rude of me." She wowed me. She aced the course. There was not one lesson that she wasn't there. She she was she thrived to please. And, and, and get that A. I respected that. Mm. And we had a talk later. And I got to know why she was as such. So here the question is, societies, our societies are very judgmental. We're not tolerant. Mm. In fact, the word tolerance assumes that there is something you're unhappy about, that mm. there's something that's unacceptable, that you have to accept. That's why it's tolerable, tolerable. Mm. But true tolerance is in four steps. Number one, accepting. Not accepting. Accepting, not only accepting, but accepting to talk, to have that conversation and communicate. Number two, understand. Understand why they are like that. Mm. Three, forgive. Not forgive them for who they are, but forgive them. In Arabic, there is something called uh, al-'afu. Al-'afu means forgive. But ar-rahma is mercy. Mm -hmm. To have mercy on those who have, you have to have respect for their journeys. Have mercy, forgiving, not in the sense of forgiving them, but having mercy on them. To look at them in a kind eye and say, it's because of who they are as a being. God has created them that way. We're different. We are different. Forgive yourself for thinking so. Correct. Finally, unite. Isn't unity what humanity is all about? Mm. Aren't we all about living together and being together and living in oneness? So that's, that was the gist of it. And I looked at how his, the late Sheikh Zayed started tolerance and how his successors have done the same. And I ended up with that analogy, how and what tolerance means. Mm. For that reason, you know, we... Part of what I've been doing during this year, um, I'm under the umbrella of His Highness Sheikh Abdul Aziz bin Hamid al Naimi, and he has created a team mm -hmm. of four people. We're three today. I was chosen among 50 social media influencers on social media to represent uh, the Year of Tolerance as a tolerant night. Yes. And what we do is that we raise awareness on tolerance through activities and through initiatives. Yes. And our final initiative that we've been working on for the past year is in, in combination with uh, collaboration with Community Development Authority, Dubai Police, uh, specifically the jails, okay. and uh, a bunch of social media influencers that have agreed to dedicate their time uh, with us on this initiative. And what we do is that we do two things. We go in and we train those, uh, by the way, 80% of the people in the jails today in the Emirate of Dubai are of drug addicts. Uh, they are trying to get better, they're trying to uh, become sober. 
and uh, it's, it's working. In fact, I learned so much when I went in. I myself went in and trained. And in, in my mind, I'm thinking, it's one of the best things that has ever happened to them that they end up there because they're only there. The jails don't want to, they don't intend to keep them there. Mm. They intend that they are separated out of the community to get better. And inside the jails, they have rehab. Right. So they do both. They do rehab and they, they keep them. And it, it's, it's actually, I went in the other day. It's, it's very, <laughs> very classy. Mm. For a jail, you think jails? No, it's actually it looks like rehab, but they have Confined. some kind of a security. Sure, yeah. and but it's great that they're doing work on they're, developing these individuals. Yes, yes, and the intention from us was that what what I train outside, I wanted people, I wanted them. They're they're as 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 good as anybody else out there. Absolutely, but their environment pushed them into something like this. Addiction is a disease. It is really a disease. It's not something, it's not, um, uh, as I said, you know, you're prone mm. to it. It's something that 60% is, is, 60 is, in, your is yes. in your chromosome. So we have to treat it as so. Yes. People have heart disease. Some people have addiction disease. Yes. You know, so that's number one. We do training, but also we do on social media a campaign, which we are campaigning at the moment, for to embrace them, for their pa their families to embrace them. The people don't want their children to to wed any of these men and women because they have this fingerprint, and that is that they've been in jail. They they are an addict. They're you know ex addicts. So it's it's tough. And the workforce as a workforce, they're available. But the market doesn't want to take that risk. And I don't blame the market mm. because it takes about a year for those ex-addicts to become better. It takes them a year. But now you're also developing their skill, though. You're developing so their skill. So they're not skill. coming up into no. the community. No. Uh, I guess it's a competitive environment. Very competitive. And when, you when you're coming out of this kind of situation... You're behind the eight ball. Absolutely. And just to recover. Recover? Yes. Recovery takes a year. Yes. The market should never ever think of taking anybody before a year. Mm. Plus there are certain criteria. So they have to be, they have to pass the tests, their, their urine tests, make sure that there's, there's no intake. Also, they have to go through rehab, proper rehab, and show proof that they're actually getting better. Mm. And there is that intention to get better. And with and the help of the Dubai Police yeah. and Community Development Authority, they're doing an amazing job. Amazing. Amazing job. The support these people get, it's amazing. What's the initiative called? It's called Kulna Wahid. Kulna, we're all one. Yes. Lovely. All of us are one. I'll grab the link and we'll place that Please. also in the show notes. What a fantastic, what a fantastic uh, cause. That's great. You mentioned fear. Hmm. Something we all have. You mentioned that there is, it's the number one thing that holds us back, fear of failure. We've got many fears, you know, fear of success, fear of this, fear of that, fear of being judged, fear of being ridiculed, mm -hmm. you name it. Yet when we're born, we're only born with two fears. Mm. And that's the fear of loud noises and the fear oh. of falling backwards, right? The reality is we have this as adults and whoever is watching this, the chances are they've got, they've got more than the two they were born with. Mm. What would be some steps? that you recommend someone can take at least towards progressing and dealing with their fears? I'll, I'll tell you right from my experience. Sure. Because people relate most to real people. 100%. Number one, make sure you have a friend by your side because we always need a hand. Would you perhaps give us context of one of the fears that you've had to deal with? I've, I was always... I was, I was afraid of everything, like literally, literally anxious of everything, mm. anxious to leave the room, anxious to, anxious of maybe, maybe I'm going to have an accident, anxious, fear, 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 fearing my, for my children's safety, fear, fear for the future, anything that had to do with future, I was fearful of it. It you was were, very extreme. You were doing the 90% off the 75%. Absolutely. 75% of our negative Shall I keep it of thoughts is negative. Yeah, absolutely. No problems. Is negative and 90% of it is 
never gonna happen. Never gonna happen. And you were doing and it. My, and I was doing it. <laughs> so, um, so I, oh, I remember having that that somebody really being by your side and saying it's gonna be okay, calming you down. You need that voice. You need that other energy that is external, that is a positive one that will help you. Number one. Number two. Do your research. Okay. Involve and surround yourself with the science behind what it, why is this happening to me? Is it for everybody? Is it just me? Okay. Um, research the fear that you research have. Research the fear that you have. Or get some help. Like if I were to tell you, get some help. But some people don't have the means to get the help. Mm. You have a lot of yeah. free YouTube. resources. Yeah. YouTube, again, you know, the, the, the books that are online, the books, the articles that you can get. There are so many sources. Educating yourself, and that's what really helped me. I found out that I'm a curious soul, but not curious in other people's business. Curious as in to understand why. The most important question you can ask in your life is why. Then you ask how. Mm -hmm. So why am I feeling this? Okay, how can I get better? You need to understand why. Mm. Logical people like us, logical people that are, and I want to say even educated people. Mm -hmm. When you're too educated, sometimes it becomes complicated because you want to understand why all the time. And not only understand why, you really need to be convinced. Mm. So if you're not convinced with those answers, you will keep looking for that answer that will satisfy your need. Mm. So I kept looking for five years for that answer to satisfy my need. Mm. My fear stopped after I got help with my doctor. Number two, after I tried and had experience with my creator, I was fearful for nothing. Everything is meant to be this way. Everything is taken charge of. We think we're in control, mm. but we really aren't. Because you never choose your parents, you never choose to be born, you never choose your religion, you never choose, later on, uh, you're born the way you are, and then later on in life you choose. I, was, I didn't choose to be depressed. You don't know what's gonna happen tonight. I, not at you all. have zero control. But all I know is that positive belief that tomorrow is better. So mm. what fear? I have experience with God. We love to learn from experiences. Mm. And people say, learn from other people's experiences. Yes, to some extent. But I was not somebody that learned from people's experiences. You had to experience it yourself. I had to do it myself. Mm. And I, at the time, I didn't know I had to do it myself. Later on in life, I learned that, Maya, you heard this a hundred times. Until you tried it, then you got it. Yes, you lose more. But that's your journey. It's meant to be that way. Mm. So my fears faded away to some extent. Mm. I'm not afraid of your future anymore because I know from past experience that that was the best. That's why I said depression was the best thing. Mm. Today I'm the first and only PhD scholar to research emotional intelligence. Mm. I always thought I was unique. I just didn't know how, when, for what? Unique for what? And I was that know. journey, including it was depression, that, that made that me who I am today. Absolutely. You know, and I'm so grateful for it. I never asked to be on social media. It came because of the research. Sure. Um, I never asked to, to train. I, didn't, I never looked for it. One of my students saw me that I was good in adult learning. She said, can I give your CV to somebody? And that somebody started this part. And then social media. I used to put what I work on social media. Social media started getting that name out there, saying, okay, so other entities started calling me. Mm. And there I started my journey. I'm almost publishing a book mm -hmm. soon with, with all the emotional intelligence messages that I've given out in the past three years. Mm -hmm. I put them together and I thought I'd do document it. Excellent. And it's, I finished it in both languages, Arabic and English. Fantastic. So soon cool. next year I will be a published author. Well, Did well, I ask for it? Yeah. No. No. Very good. I always thought I'd publish a book, mm. but in what? Mm. I really felt it. I felt that I will publish a book one day. And it happened, but it happened 
in a different way, different look and feel for different reasons. And it's all good. You gotta trust your journey. Absolutely. Be hopeful. Absolutely. Be hopeful, trust your journey. That's how your fears, but really fears go away mm. when you see some hope. Mm -hmm. And you see some hope, make sure you pray for that hope. Make sure you know that the hope will come. Even the hope will come. Be hopeful that there is hope. Yes. If I can add something to it, I've also found that individuals who are high performers, I work with you know, great people from all over the world, different cultures, different languages. Not only are they hopeful, they're also willing to get off their bum and actually put in the work. Because mm. one of the things that helps you become more confident to face your fear, for example, standing up on stage is a fear a lot of individuals have at high levels. Mm. That fear comes down, the courage goes up. Sure, by doing, but also by skilling up. Sure. When you develop the skill, you become more confident in your ability. Mm -hmm. Like going to a battle. You can go to battle unprepared, Absolutely. with no shield, with no sword, with nothing, well, you're going to get slaughtered. Of course. Or you'll, you'll be a lot more confident knowing you're wearing armor. What you're saying brings a very important point. Throw yourself out there. Mm. Very uncomfortable. Very uncomfortable. But do it. What is uncomfortable will make you. Mm. You will learn more about Emotional intelligence is learning who am I. It'll, it'll teach you who, really, who you really are. I'm afraid. Okay, it's okay. Even if you're afraid, okay, then we'll deal with it later, but do it. Sweat. Sweat, because people will sweat. Get those anxiety. Get that palpitation mm. out. But you feel so good afterwards. Mm. That, that, that feeling. And especially when you're very prepared, that applause from others is so reassuring. It gives you that, um, that oomph. Mm. That, oh, I'm actually not bad. Talk to yourself. Say, yes, I'm not bad. In our culture, we're not supposed to think of ourselves in a good way because then with our ego, we hit our ego. But our egos are already, are already out there. Sure. Uh, but you can say, I'm good and I'm going to get better. Absolutely. Yeah. Our egos, unfortunately, are out there for the wrong things. Mm. But if your ego is tested to become a better ego, mm. that's a good thing. Mm. Since you mentioned about writing a book and putting it together, things like putting a book together mm. or... Be, you know, whatever project we're focused on in order to be able to achieve requires productivity. It requires having, you know... Perseverance. It, it, yeah, it also requires you being able to do what's important, to, you know, to create it, so to write the content, to put it together. You need to have content. I'm getting um, to this because I put out an article, which we, we put out on our website, on biohacking motivation and flow. Hmm. My question to you is, how do you get yourself in a state of flow? Because you know, when you're in a state of flow, you get heaps done. Sure. You get things done. You put your manuscript together. You can procrastinate for a couple of years. I don't know if that was the case with you or not, but I've spoken to many authors who've procrastinated, including myself, for a couple of years, and suddenly they belted out a book in two weeks. They got themselves in a state of flow. High achievers, productive individuals, they have a way of putting themselves in a state of flow on a regular basis. They're not waiting for, one day it will come. Mm. I'm an artist. Mm. I'm gonna wait until it comes to me. No, they have a habit, they have a ritual of putting themselves in a state of flow. Do you have rituals or habits that help you, you know, that, that you put, um, that you implement to put yourself in a state of flow? Right. Um, I love what I do. Mm. The habit is that I love what I do with passion mm. and it's that love and passion that drives me to look for opportunities it, it's that it opens my I always feel that what you love uh, will give you that openness to look at the things that make you that I love this I love this the things that you love will naturally grab your attention mm. The flow that I did was, you will probably find this very, I never had a plan. I really never had a plan. And that's why I believe, I always say, believe in your journey. Mm. I never had a plan, but I loved what I do, and I believe that I am different. Well, what's interesting from the research that I did was, you, you didn't believe in what you've achieved. 
You only believe in it now that you've gone through the journey, right? Yes. For you, it was the reverse. It was. I always knew that I was different, and I always knew that, oh my gosh, I found what I love. Because you have to understand, I came from a career that I didn't enjoy. Mm. So when you find that it, that's it. You're like, this is it. This is what I want to do for the rest of my life. But how about if I was able to affect as many people as I can at once? That's the vision I'm heading for. Today, I affected my children. They're all grown up. Then the people around me, they believe in my vision. People don't believe in your vision until they see action. And then I'm thinking, okay, I want to do it on a government level. So I started training around the Emirates. Now I feel like I want to, I still have it in me to do even more. Did I have a plan? No. But my passion, my love, and I never stopped working. Mm. Even on the weekend, I would always, your phone is such an amazing tool. Social media, you can do it for the right reason. You can get things done. The technology we have on our phones today, it's, it's more powerful than what took, people to, uh, what took Neil Armstrong to the moon. True, true. I used to get online on social media and follow people that seem to speak the same mojo, the same words and language. Mm. They could be TV presenters. They could be TV hosts. They could be speakers. They could be whatever. And you felt they were on the same I wavelength. I felt on the same wavelength. Mm. I used to get in touch with them in direct message. Some people responded, some people didn't. Mm. Some people responded at the spot, some people responded later on. What were you asking? I used to always ask, hey, I'm, my name is Maya. I used to always introduce myself and I would like to do something uh, to present in such as, I always was tar- I always targeted the area that I wanted. So if I were to be on a TV program, I said, my name is Maya Lawar, and I really think that I could be your next guest because I have so-and-so credentials. Like throw yourself out there. Mm. Don't think that you're any less. Mm. Don't think that you are, don't underestimate who you really are. You say, who am I? You are somebody unique. You just need to know where are you unique in. The unique in takes years. But once you know, really, I I tasted it, I felt it, I, I lived it. Once you know, you know. And things just come your way. That's why I say I believe it that what you what you want wants you. It's true, but you have to work. It doesn't come like that. What tips would you have for individuals who ask the question, "Who am I?" Positives and negatives. I don't say negatives. I say room room for improvement. Sure. Look into the mirror. I'm, I am good at X. I'm horrible at X. Do you recommend writing it down? Of course, write mm. it down. At one point in my depression, I remember I used to say, I used to put stickers in the car, sticky notes in the car, in the office, in, uh, on the mirror in my bathroom. When I open my cupboard, anywhere my eye comes on, I put the same statement. I am special. Mm. And uh, it worked, but it wasn't, it wasn't enough. It worked, you know, you say, talk to yourself positive. It worked, but at the time it wasn't enough. I really needed the, the medical help mm. as well. So I, always, I told you the logic was there, but I was still like not right. Like I wasn't functioning right, but it helped. So talk to yourself positive. That's why when we started this, I hate, I try. I even tell my, to my children, my, my daughter would say, I hate this. I don't bring haters into this world. Mm. I tell her this. She said, okay, what do you want me to say? I said, I, I, dis, I, I dislike, mm. or I would prefer, or I would have loved, or I don't like. Mm. Don't say I hate, because it gives you that negative connotation. Absolutely. And feeling. And the words you speak starts with thoughts, and the thought over there really determines everything. It becomes actions, and actions become habits, and mm. habits become a way of life. You mentioned vision. Mm. How do you get others to buy into your vision? Because there are many individuals who might not be lost. They might be at the stage where they have vision. Role model. You have to model it. You have to work by example. Don't speak things that you don't do. Mm. Don't be a hypocrite between you and yourself. 
Don't smoke a cigarette and tell your kids And tell not your to kids smoke. don't smoke. Mm. Don't say pray and you don't pray. Don't do the things that people that, you know, things that I do, I know that I do, and that are not, because I'm not an angel, right? Mm. Things that I do wrong, I never preach. Mm. I never preach the, the, other, the, other, the other side. I stay away from it because I need to be true to who I am, why I started this journey. Mm -hmm. My journey is to improve humanity yes. in leading themselves and leading others. That's what I want to do for the rest of my life. I know. From your experience with emotional intelligence and leadership, if someone has just been uh, promoted to a new position, mm -hmm. they have a team of 10, 12 people they're overseeing, they have a vision, they want to get these individuals buy-in. Apart from leading by example, what steps can they take to get everyone on board? Like really get everyone on board? Past experience. Okay. Past projects. Convince me. Because at the end of the day, you need to sell them. Mm -hmm. You need to sell them your vision. You need them to be on board, right? Mm -hmm. To sell them your vision, I always like to do the research. Where are these people coming from? Okay, so take the time to find out about each individual. Each individual. Who are they? Who was their past leader? What circumstance did they go to that made them disbelieve and not have faith and hope in the next leader and in the future of the company? Mm -hmm. So do that research. They might not even be negative. They not just they, haven't bought into your vision. They haven't been bought. The people like to listen to stories. Mm -hmm. Tell them the story of your life. Show them humility. Show them that you are not perfect. That you yourself have gone through struggles. Mm. And you know exactly what it means to be on that side or on even a deeper side. Mm -hmm. Show them that. Show them that you're, you're also, you, you've, you've done successes. You've, you've been through struggle. Mm. You've succeeded. You've been, whether rewarded, awarded, even, even, even if you weren't given an award, but you were actually... You actually made a name for yourself. Sure, you've hit milestones. You've, you've done something. Yeah. There is a reason you've been promoted. Yes, mm. this doesn't come because nothing, because of nothing. Um, Kevin, I'm somebody that I wasn't, nothing was handed to me. Mm. I was a principal, I was in between walls. Only the parents in this, in this little family knew me. Mm. Community didn't know me, society didn't know me. Mm. Who is my al -Hawari? Why? Mm. Why should I even... When you talk social media influencer, the other day I was introduced as... I was a VIP guest. I was like, VIP? Oh my God. I, I, I can't even... Still, I'm not... I don't see myself that way. I see myself VIP. Why? Because, because people say I'm VIP. I don't feel so. Mm. I, feel like, I feel like I'm a human being. I'm, I'm like everybody else. But thank you. So kind of you. She was introducing me and she said one of her social media influences. And I thought to myself, but I'm not, I was thinking, eh? no, as she's introducing, I'm not in fashion. Uh, we're very critical of social media influencers. But then I thought influencer means influencer. Influencer means you're able to lead a flock of people. You have succeeded. It means people get it. People like what you do. People believe in your vision. People want to be like you. Mm. Influencer means change, hope, leadership. Mm. Whether in any domain, am I proud of myself? Yes, so it hit me. I am proud of myself. Mm. I am VIP in my eyes. That's most important, that mm. I've done something for humanity. Mm. I believe that in any job you take, make sure you put a, a mark of you being there. Mm. That the person, that person really built this, really made this. This initiative was started by Kevin and ended by Kevin and then he left. God bless him. Mm. Or leave a mark, left field. Oh my God, thank God he left. It's you. You make that choice. That's a choice, absolutely. That's a choice that you make. So influencing others... You have to, I, I remember I showed humility, a lot of humility, I still do. I was talking to a bunch of executives yesterday mm. in Abu Dhabi. All of them, they all together and combined, they lead over a thousand employees. Mm -hmm. 
in, a, in an entity in Abu Dhabi. I didn't know. When I went, I thought it was just employees. But no, these people were, were, were leaders. leaders and uh, they, took, they took decisions, decision makers. I thought to myself, okay, Maya, you could either, either stress out or not. Of course, I was prepared. I always get prepared, always prepared. Mm. But then I thought, be yourself. It turns out that they are as any employee that I have met before. Mm -hmm. No difference. Because we're human beings. I was going to say that humans. <laughs> we, have the, we laugh to the same jokes. Yes. We are sad to the same stories. Yeah. We, we, we relate. All have hopes, we all have dreams, hopes, we fears. All have, and all you can do, of course, you keep that audience. But what I, what I change is the type of examples. Mm -hmm. So I, I change the examples related to what they do. To who they are. I thought to myself, this is like the best opportunity to lay it down and let them let them maybe look a little bit more into how they lead their teams. Speaking of leaving a mark, mm. what's your ambition? What um, does the world look like in the next five or ten years? And perhaps why? What well, once okay. you say so so what it is. I see myself in a hyper post in my country mm -hmm. for the reason and my original reason and my original vision, which will always be to improve humanity in leadership, in leading oneself and leading others. Mm. Leading oneself how? Through emotional intelligence, through those skills that we need. As I was doing my research, I realized that all the prophets that have passed and all the, the believers and thinkers who have, all, have created even their own little religions that people have followed, have all been so, they have, they're so much high with emotional intelligence. To them, they forgot themselves and gave others and wanted the intention to improve others and inflict a flock of other people and leave a mark. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not here to, to say I want prophecy, not at all, but I have a vision to help improve not just my folk. We are a melting pot of the United Arab Emirates. Absolutely. 263 nationalities. We're 10 million? 1 million are Emirati. What about the other 9 million? I'm, I'm proud of what my country has done, and I feel that I'm, I need to give back to everybody living on this, because at the end of the day, people here, living here, are still giving us service. Mm -hmm. So it is, it is my duty and my role as an Emirati woman to give back to the country, to give back to my country and to the people living on this land. Maya, from what I see today, you've gone from a person who was fearful to what today, what everyone sees today, and you are fearless. Mm. Mm. How or why? Is it why or is it how? Uh, it's both. It's both. Yeah. It's both. You can take I'll, it in whichever direction I'll, I'll you like. It's both. Um, I think that's admirable and it would be something powerful. Yes, I, I believe yeah. that my journey has made me fearless. Why? Every time I succeeded in a, on a stepping stone, I succeeded, it made me stronger. What makes you stronger? So what makes you strong and hopeful and positive is when you love your, uh, your endeavors, you love the decisions that you took, mm. and you love that even more when they succeed in front of people, the people have been saying, no, don't. You're not ready, you're not fit, it's not you, it's not us. Were these things you faced? Of course. It's normal. Mm. When you're the only one in the family that has, uh, has this, this left field thought that you are very unique, that you want the world to know. Uh, I remember my husband, God bless him, he was like, why nobody in the family is like this? Why? Can't you be just normal? <laughs> He's right. Yeah. Because I was normal. Yeah. I don't feel I'm normal. I'm yeah. able to say that proudly. Yes. I'm unique. I'm different. I have something. And every time I took a stepping stone and still did what I wanted for the right reasons, the right way, mm. because I still kept my values, the family, the culture, my husband, you know, I always kept that in check. 
and I still did it, I succeeded. You know, the first people to applaud you are the same people that stopped you. <laughs> At least tried. Yeah. So I'm thankful to them because they shaped who I am today. Because you could, on social media, you can go haywire. Your career could go like, oh my God, everywhere, scattered. But these, these, these things that come across you, the old people that come and say, no, you can't, it's not us, it's not this. It, in a way, um, puts a frame on your work mm. that you have those guidelines. Okay, do what you want to do, but keep those in check. Don't hurt. Do the right thing. Don't hurt. And mm. Don't be rude. And mm. don't, be, don't be disrespectful. Mm. Because they're doing it out of fear for you. Mm. They're out of love for you. Mm. And every time I stepped a stone and it was successful, I, had, I gained confidence. Again, gained confidence. Gained confidence until I became fearless, yes. Bold, yes. Brave, yes. Today, I, one thing on my bucket list, I, wanna, I want to do skydive. And I, 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 I want to do it. You want to do it. I want okay. to do it. And I will do it. The right time. Sure. And I want my husband to come with me because he doesn't want to do it. But I want him I to relate do it with, with me. I relate with him. <laughs> but but I, know, I know that we have it in ourselves to be bold. Sure. But we choose not to. Mm. What you said is critical. It's taking the step, no matter how small. It's taking that small step in, that di in the right direction. Yes. And no matter how small it is, but with every step, you gain that little bit more confidence. Yes. To a point where you become where you are. Yes. That's amazing. Thinking. Mm. This is critical. You've mentioned it, but I'd like to highlight it. We can think weak thoughts. We can think strong thoughts. We can think um, small thoughts. We can think big thoughts. What one thought has helped you grow to where you are today? A thought the or one, a way of thinking. The, the one thought that keep, kept me going, I still uh, believe it and I will always believe it. And I will not allow anybody to, to put me down for it. I will not allow them. I know I'm going to make it. Mm. I know I'm going to make it. If you, if you were here right here, you'd believe it. <laughs> 100, like, I, was I, like, I believe that. I know. Yeah. I know I'm going to make it. I know. And I'm making it, but I know I'm going to make it where I want it to be. That vision. Boom. Oh. And to me, everything is like noise. And yes, that's good. And thank you. And sure, why not? And yes, I will fix it. But then uh, this is me. I'm, it's there. This is really good. How do you deal with distractions? Because we're in a world which has a lot of noise. And so how do you, what do you say yes and no to? Because I'm not talking about just the distractions. What do you say no to to stay focused in terms of even opportunities? Because what sometimes we mistake yeah. is we think it's as you gotta say no to distractions. They'll say they overcommit to and say yes mm. to a lot of things, and they end up realizing, hey, I'm not getting to my overall vision because I've got 15 things on my plate. Mm -hmm. Realize that you have constraints. In that, in that, in that realization. Like 24 hours in a day. Yes, you have constraints, and I have a family. I have my parents, I have the people around me. If my children were younger, I wouldn't have been able to do this. Mm. So it's always about the right time to do it, the right time to start. Family to me comes first. Mm -hmm. and then pursue whatever you want to do. That's one. The other thing, um, what was, you said something that I also wanted to say to. It's how do you, dealing with distractions, dealing so what distractions. you say yes and no to in order to stay focused with that vision. I'm yeah. gonna make it, whatever it is. I like to, I always like to do my research on the opportunity that's coming. Sometimes, at the beginning, I remember at the beginning, I was thirsty for any opportunity. Mm -hmm. I was open to all opportunities. And I used to go to the, on every opportunity I went to, I learned from, even sure. if it was the wrong choice. Absolutely. But at least if I didn't go, I wouldn't have learned. So it, you kind of sharpen, you kind of hone your, your you, you begin to have an eye for this. And you have that, uh, that strength to be able to say no. It takes strength to say no. Sure. 
and it takes also courage to say yes, although you know that the people around you don't like it. But to say yes with a heavy heart and you know because you know it's good for you. You know it's good for you, but you know that the family is not going to accept. So I used to do it this way. I used to uh, do it and, uh, and then try to convince later. Like, I'll convince. Because I know, I know this is good for me. Only me can see that. Because I believe in that vision. Mm. Or I would convince, 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 and then take it. Take them with me on board. And then when I succeeded, they said, you know what? You were right. So you, there's a lot of uh, communicating. And if you want to get where you want to get to, you got to show some humility. Mm. You know, you got you to gotta, you gotta talk to people nicely. You got to get them on board. You got to convince. There's a whole lot of political things that you have to do to get them with you. So that at least... I have not, allies. I have to have allies. Yeah. Uh, because at least, at least if you fail, at least they won't eat you. Like, literally eat you. Mm. At least when you fail, somebody will say, you hate to hear it, we told you so. But you still wanted to do it. Mm. Uh, or you find somebody that will say, it's okay, it'll come. Since you said failure and, or fail, uh, what failure have you had that you learned a good lesson from? Oh, that's a good question. Um... Career. Okay. I was asked to come to an interview. And I took, I, that, that job was for me. It was for me. You wouldn't find any better mm -hmm. in my mind. So it was about a year and a half ago. And uh, I went over and I took the interview. They called me two days later and they said, sorry, you're not senior enough. Oh. Senior <laughs> enough? Really? It touched me, but I thought, what? they don't know what they're talking about. Mm. A year and a half later, here I am. I don't want or care to go back and say, look, this is me today. But I know that in me, I believed in me. They only saw me for what an hour. Doesn't make me. It doesn't make me who who they think they, is me. Mm. Me is me. I know me. Mm. I know I'm good. Believe that in you. Don't let anybody break you. And it kept me going. It, I kept going. I that to me was noise. But imagine it was the only interview I got. I I applied to so many, and the one interview I get, this is what I get, in return. You're not senior enough? I thought, okay, I'll take it positively. Maybe, because I don't have much experience in government, maybe you're not there yet, Maya. Maybe they're right. So work on that. So every opportunity that came to train in government with government employees around the Emirates, I would spend five nights in Fujairah. The week after, go back home for the weekend and go to Ras al-Khaimah. From Ras al-Khaimah, go to Abu Dhabi. I did everything in my power to learn what government culture meant. Mm. And yes, I get it now. Which you wouldn't have had it not happened. No. Yes, will I make it? Absolutely I will. Because mm. I still see myself. 100%. 100%. 100 Best piece of advice you've received? While you're thinking of that, um, a book or an audio book, or, or a video from the, from the many YouTube videos you would have watched hmm. um, that impacted you the most, that perhaps we could share with the audience? In Arabic or in English? Either or. I, I will give you that, that link by, uh, it's called uh, uh, an episode from, a series of episodes that was, uh, was in Ramadan. Uh -huh. And it's called Mahyai. That to me, it's... Okay, that's still the... That, that's still the... There's that one there. There's another one. Sure. And that is the, the power of your imagination mm -hmm. to create reality. Very good. At the time where people didn't think of it, didn't know it, yes. didn't understand it. To me, it was, it was new. This was in 2014. 2013, 2014. 
So these two videos really, really touched my heart and changed the way I think. It's all, it's all how you, it's all in your, in your eyes and eye of the beholder. If you see people liars, they're all going to be liars. If you see that they're going to give you goodness, they're all going to give you goodness because you will be looking for that. Sure, the power of imagination in creating right. reality. In creating reality. In creating right. We'll place reality. that link. So, um, uh, something that that really helped me improve or words that, that really came to my mind. I, I shared one time my ambition with, uh, she's a life coach. And she said to me, you know, Maya, if you want to be that, you need to, this was early on, you need to surround yourself with people that are in that environment. You cannot say you want to be X, and you're here, and those kind of people are there. Mm. For you to get there, she meant work for it, sure. but she meant specifically surround yourself in that arena. Absolutely. Read it, listen to it, introduce Being in yourself, presence. be yeah. in that presence, involve yourself. Mm. That started my volunteering experience with Red, Red Crescent, mm. and today with with uh, the Tolerance Nights under His Highness. I, I volunteered as a volunteer speaker with the Red Crescent, Dubai, for two years, and I was awarded uh, Ambassador of Knowledge for two years in a row, 2017, 2018. Mm. And in 2019, I was chosen on that behalf amongst 50 uh, social media influencers to, to be an icon of tolerance. So, it really helped. Volunteering is such a powerful tool. Yes. It gets you, because you, you, you're in there for their good intentions. You're in there for giving, for nothing, for nothing in return. But because you give for nothing in return, you think there's something, there's anything in life for free? Mm. No. Even with the creator and with the universe or with the energy, for every action, there's a reaction. Nothing is for free. Mm. You give good, good comes right at you. We talk about karma, that's it. Mm. I believe in that. Very much so. And it always comes back running to you. Running. And in a big way. Mm. It mesmerizes you. Why? Because you're always optimistic. You always feel that there is hope. There is a better tomorrow. Mm. Tell me, if we don't have all these good feelings... How would we be on this earth? Useless of ourselves, negative. It would be a terrible place. Terrible, mm. terrible place. Where we brought, we're living. Forget the fact that there's a creator. Do you think we were brought, like meant, like logically, brought on this earth to feel that way? Why? Why were we even given awareness? The difference between us and other uh, living beings mm. is that we have awareness. And that's right. Not brains, they have brains, we have awareness. Why? Were we given the, the bless of awareness to be aware of our sorrows and live those sorrows and die from those sorrows? It cannot be. The world cannot be just that. There must be option A. There is something, there is an exit. Yes. So there is something more. What is it? What is it? Like, what is it? Is it the opposite? Perhaps. Let me try the opposite. Let me see where that door takes me. Let me try hope. Let me Let try me positivity. Try Let me try betterment. Yes. Yeah. Let's see where would that take us. You've mm. tried negativity. Mm. Let's try there. Something will come out as negativity. Something came out. Sure. And you know. Absolutely. Uh, speaking of negativity, mm. people like to share their negative advice. So my question is, what's the rubbish piece of advice you've received? Um, there was somebody that told me, you, literally in my face, you think you're going to make it in this country? I said, yes. Be logical. Okay. 
Thank you. You know, it drives me even more. Oh, I can tell. <laughs> oh, I can tell. Oh my God. It drives me even more. I, you know what? I don't even hear it. Like, it's just to me, it's a puff of air. Mm. It affects me. But it affects me in a way where he doesn't know what he's talking about. Mm. He doesn't know what he's talking about. And I always tell people, one day, you will see, one day. Okay. Who would you like to, um, to have this video or audio piece? Who would you have, or who would you like it to connect with? People that are, that are actually, let me try to put it in the proper way. Okay, there are a lot of people that are successful. Mm -hmm. But they don't put the success in its right place. They don't give it, they don't give themselves the actual honor that they succeeded because they actually worked hard. As a mother, I always felt guilty that I took time out of my children's life mm. for me. I am succeeding, yes, but I always felt guilty. Mm. It, was, it was never a complete, beautiful feeling that I really, I, I succeeded. There was always something missing. Mm. It's always something that broke my happiness. And it was the feeling of guilt, whether it could be motherhood, it could be any other guilt that people are doing. Yes. Some people, like me, out there, have some kind of guilt they're dealing with, that they don't enjoy their success. They don't enjoy it. Some people are successful, but are dealing with a lot of depression. Are dealing with mild depression. Mm. Are dealing with struggles in their life, that the happiness and the the achievements that they're doing in their career is because become normal, very normal. Yes. I want to tell these people that you are doing a great job. Use it to the betterment of yourself, at the betterment of your community. So this is one side. The other side is I completely resonate with people who feel that they are a nobody, mm. that they want to be a somebody. You are a somebody. You just know, you need to know in which field you are a somebody. You could be the best mother, but be the best version mm. of you. Not of Maryam, not of Ahmed. We tend to compare ourselves to people. And we don't compare ourselves to us. We, the comparing really, really kills any hope you have. It's cancer, comparing is cancer. You, sh you should never do it because nobody's the same. So you are a somebody, yeah. but in which field? You have to figure that out. And become the best version and of yourself. Become the best version of yourself. Mm. To the successful people and to the leaders, be better leaders. The people that work under you are a gift. Mm. You, it's a, you're, you're little, I always say a leader is a father. Mm. It is a father. And these people under you are your children. Take good care of them. Mm. Make them feel safe, happy. You'll get the best out. You'll get love back. And the way they love you is they'll, they'll, they'll work for you day and night. And they will not care about swiping in and swiping out. You've got three kids. Mm. Um, your youngest kid, um, special needs, mm -hmm. or as we like to say in Dubai, people of determination. Mm -hmm. What's a lesson you learned from your youngest child? Don't be ashamed of them. Don't be ashamed. Mm. Be very proud that you have someone like that. To have someone like that, you've been chosen to walk that walk. Mm. It means you are special yourself. Nobody can have, it's a, it breaks, it shatters your world. Your child is sick. That's how it is. For you to be handle this and face that every day, it takes a lot of courage. Mm. That's why people are not happy to have, or they're ashamed, or they are heavy. Mm. They don't want. They don't want to deal with it. Don't be ashamed. Be proud. That heaviness is real. It's real. I can only imagine. It's it's real. It's real. It's hurtful. Be proud. 
you know, what doesn't make you, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. I always thought, what is that all about? Mm. It's just people like to use it, you know, like, a, they like, it's like a slogan that, you know, what doesn't kill you makes you strong. Like, it's so true. What doesn't kill you is there for a reason. Mm. It's for you to learn better skills, to know more about yourself, mm. To handle it better, that's how it makes you stronger. Death is the end of life. There's nothing to be learned after that. Mm. You're done. Mm. So being on this earth, whoever said it was going to be a walk in the park? It's not, apparently, obviously. Things hit you, you don't choose. You don't choose. You don't know you don't know that it was coming, even. When, you're, when you have a child that comes out blind, it rocks your being, your world, everything changes, or is death. What is that all about? Some children have both, mm. deaf and blind. Then what? End of life? No. Of course it makes you stronger because you learn so many things. But we don't know that we're stronger. We know it after we master it. Then I know I'm stronger. Then I know I've grown some patience. I never had patience. You gotta go through the experience. You have to go through yeah. it. Yeah. Keeping it on the kids, mm -hmm. I'm sure you're a huge inspiration to them and will continue to be. Inshallah. Inshallah. But if you had to only pick one critical thought, skill, or ability that you'd like to leave your kids with for each one of them to have the best chance of being the best version of themselves, what would you say would be that critical thought? thing that one thing um, I always have this conversation with my children and I always say perseverance 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 never stop working that was one the other one follow things that was that were not said to me mm. even yourself I'm sure you think 30 40 years ago people parents would say follow your dreams no People wanted to be doctors, pharmacists, engineers. That was it. That was it. It was cut out. And if you're not, then you're a loser. Then later came computer science. Then finance came. Yes. That they're money makers. Yeah, it changed. The wave that we're going through, all of these are going to be irrelevant. Mm -hmm. To me, to my children, I always say, follow your passion. Mm -hmm. He said, Mom, but my passion is very different. It's not your typical career. So it doesn't matter. Do what you have to do. Get your bachelor's degree. Get it because, and put it in our face. Say, Dad, here it is. Salam alaikum. I'm going off to do what I want. Mm. There are certain things we have to, we have to confine to. We have to. If, it's so beautiful that you love what you do, what you do as a profession is what you're passionate about. That's the best combo. That, that is something you wouldn't, you wouldn't ask for more. And I think we're going into a day and age where just about anything, because there are so many things. So who would have thought uh, playing online is a professional job? Of course. It's actually social media influencer. This, you never knew. A drone pilot. Yes. Is worth so much today. Probably makes more than a pilot. Of course. So, yeah, perseverance and follow that passion. Mm. The third thing I like to tell them is make sure you stick to your values of your, who you are, mm. as in whatever uh, religion you come from, culture, mm. your family values, the society, it's important. Yes. You, you don't live alone in the world. You need to make sure that these are in check. Mm. Don't limit yourself, but do the right things. Because I know what it means to be um, doing something out of the ordinary. I know. Mm. I always try to keep those in check. Speaking of out of the ordinary, mm. 500 years from now, history is going to read, Maya al-Hawari was... Was minister. This is the answer. I know it. I know it. What would you like that legacy to be? The impact? Because you spoke a lot about... Making a mark, leaving changed, a mark. Changed how leadership 
was in the UAE and became. We are very keen on leading to excellence. And it's a fact. We are keen on leading to excellence to produce numbers and results. And that's important. On the way, we lose our well-beings. Mm -hmm. We lose our well-beings. How do you keep that well-being and excellence in check together mm. to produce even more? I want to be the part where the well-being is improved for leaders and team building mm. to produce the best, to put the United Arab Emirates on the map. It is ambitious, but the UAE today, they are paying very much attention. And His Highness Sheikh Hamdan bin Mohammed Rashid Al Maktoum is paying so much attention to well-being. In fact, well-being is part of the curriculum in schools in the Emirates. Yes. Recently, only this year. Mm. For the children. But what about the adults that are already out there in the workforce? Mm. What do they do with themselves? Mm. How could we improve it? Very good. That's yeah. really good. Last question. In a world where we're all distracted, if you had the world's attention for 60 seconds, what would you tell them? Love what you do. Believe in what you do. Good things come to people. Good things come to people that work. Good things come to people that wait. Good things come to people that believe. You need those to be able to get on whatever career you need. It's so important to be passionate about what you do in life. And to be passionate without the work is nothing. You need to really work out, work hard, and look for those opportunities. So be on the outlook for those opportunities that will really put you on that landmark where you want to be. God bless. That's fantastic. Thank you. I really appreciate you making the time. Thank you. Um, I really believe that um, whoever needs to, you know, would resonate with your voice and the messages that you've shared. Mm. Uh, folks, I, I learned a lot. There were gems that were dropped here. Um, <laughs> as you know, one of the things that I do is I go through every interview a second time. I definitely recommend that you go through this video if you're watching it a second time or if you're listening to it. Um, you know, while driving or going to the gym, like you're about to go hit, yes, go for a walk. walk. Uh, if you're listening, listen to it a second time. You'll get some great gems out there. I take summary notes, which we will make available on my website. If you have questions, if you'd like to ca carry on and continue the conversation on any of the points that Maya had shared, please put them below. I'll try to answer some. Uh, perhaps we can get you, Maya, to also answer some of the questions of or continue the conversations. We'll make all the links available so you're able to follow Maya. Uh, on whatever social platform you can connect together. Pleasure. Um, as you know, this show, as always, has nothing to do with showing off, but we hope to help you get inspired, get informed, and get going. Until the next episode, I'm Kevin Abdurrahman. This is How Do They Do It? You know, and then social media. I've been, I've been in social media for two years now, two years and a half, and it gets to your head. Mm. You feel it, yeah? That's good, you earned it, you feel it. But never forget why you entered in the first place. Yes. The real intention. It brings you down.